Get inside of me And all the things I hold myself to be I'm getting tired of love And all the things I hold her above With a sacred smile And a voice my own It's a fear that contains me to the bone Gonna raise my hand Gonna keep it high Until the rules for me they don't apply Jim Dunaway, Lance Taylor, Ryan Brown, and Rockstar. Live from the Birmingham Racecourse Casino Studios, the next round, presented by Bud Light, is on now. Auburn is shocked since our last show. They're out of the tournament. Other than that, it's pretty chalky. Uh, for the only the fifth time in the history of the NCAA tournament, all the ones and twos are in the Sweet 16. Alabama, a four in the Sweet 16. They survived. We'll talk about last night's game, get some post-game reaction, and roll through the show today. Jim Dunaway, LT, is on vacation this week. That's Ryan Brown. Rockstar is here. Forrester's on vacation. Tyler's in his place. Lunsford is back there. Emily Grace is handling everything social media. She'll be in later for four downs and for trash. Taylor Korn's on her way back from Spokane, where most of this postgame reaction 
from Alabama's win will be coming from a little bit later on. We start with Alabama. Nate Oates lost all three assistants to head coaching jobs, mm-hmm. two first-round draft picks. The team was beat up and injured down the stretch. Coming out of Nashville, of all the SEC teams in the tournament, nobody was talking about Alabama um, going deep in this tournament. You and I and LT, I think we all had them in the Sweet 16. I did. Um, but a lot of people didn't. But here's this Alabama team now going through Charleston and then a physical win over Grand Canyon, and they're right back where they were last year as a number one overall seed with different expectations now, but they're back in the Sweet 16. Well, Nate Oates is in his fifth year at Alabama, and only four of those years have had an NCAA tournament. Don't forget his first year there was no NCAA tournament because of uh, the COVID shutdown. So he's coached in every possible NCAA tournament in the time he's been at Alabama, and in three of those four, he's made the Sweet 16. So one thing I will say about, about Nate Oates, the man knows his way to the Sweet 16. He knows how to get to the Sweet 16. He's really, really good at it. Um, I mean, you got to give him credit for that, man. I mean, that, that is, as he said after, after the game, that is hard to do. It is hard to get to the Sweet 16. Um, Kenny Smith said it best yesterday during the show. And we love the SEC regular season championship. Alabama had that and the tournament championship last year. That's a great season in my book. That's a, that's a hang a banner championship season. Auburn won the SEC tournament this year. Championship season, hang a banner, confetti falls. I was in Nashville. People loved it. But in reality, you're judged by four games as a head basketball coach it's in wild. college sports. Yep. Even if you get to the final four and lose – you're still considered an elite coach. Yep. It's these four games that really make your legacy in college football. You could do anything you, you could do anything you want. Uh, you can win conference championships. You can win a. T- it's the weird thing about being a basketball coach, and all these guys get it. They know it when they get in the game. You 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 coach for four months. You coach all of November. You coach all of December. You coach all of January. You coach all of February. Right, four months, and then you're judged by the last one. That's right. Do all you want in those four months. Go 31-2, and two, whatever the number is. I, you know, whatever the number of games you play in the regular season. And be an overall number one seed. And don't perform in March. You're going to get judged by that. And, and to an extent, Nate Oates was last year. I mean, that was an underachieving team last year. They did not make it past the Sweet 16. When you're the overall number one, anything short of a Final Four is a disappointment. But, I mean, that's just the weird thing about being a basketball coach is you are judged by March. That is the only thing you're judged by. Uh, it wasn't a name brand win, but it was a hard one over Grand Canyon last night, 72-61. Uh, we'll talk about how the game played out and what you thought of the game. But first, I want you to hear the excitement from the locker room in this order. Here's Aaron Estrada, Grant Nelson, and Mark Sears on what it means for this team to be playing into the second weekend post-game reaction. Uh, I don't even, I can't even explain it. It's, it's crazy. I've never, my first NCAA tournament and we're going to the Sweet 16, so I'm just happy. I'm celebrating. Everybody's happy. So. That means everything. I've never been in this position. And, I mean, just seeing everyone so happy, I mean, I'm happy myself. Uh, but, I mean, we're not done yet and we're ready, we're ready for the next game. The Sweet 16 that we played, you know, we didn't have the outcome we wanted in those four games, but those four games prepared us for this moment tonight. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's the guys in the locker room last night. Um, banged up still. Latrell Wrightsell leaves the game early on. Concussion protocol. Nate Oates says afterwards he'll be ready to go Thursday. Yeah, that was surprising to me. Was uh, it you? It was. I, you know, I don't know if the new contract comes with him being Dr. <laughs> Nate Oates now, but very quickly saying that he would be ready for Thursday. Well, the last time he was injured, uh, apparently it was a nasal cavity injury. Uh, he missed two weeks, four games. Uh, last night, it looks like it was a an injury that that um, I'm not I'm no doctor either. It may have been a concussion protocol. He didn't pass the test. He didn't come out. Ruled out early on. You saw him in street clothes going into the locker room at halftime. That's uh, but that's well, a quick turnaround. They're staying out there for him to be cleared to play on Thursday, according to Nate. Yeah, I mean that was huge uh, in the post game because my assumption was so when he went down. First of all, it was kind of a weird deal. It was really hard to see how he even got hit until they found the right replay. Like it wasn't an obvious just bang. That's right. I kept looking for him to hit his head. On I did the court. too. I thought maybe he hit his one of his teammates' knees on his way down in the bench or whatever, or hit uh, hit the chair or something. So it was kind of a weird injury to begin with. But then when he laid there that long, 
And then I don't know if you noticed it in, in game action, you could see an Alabama official walking his parents behind the bench to the Alabama locker room. And I'm like, he laid on the court a long time. He was a little staggered when they were walking him back and yeah. they showed, you know, how much help he had to get going back there. And then you get his parents coming back. I'm like, ooh, yeah. this is not good. I think you may have seen the last of the trail rights all this year. They did that one replay when he finally set up, or maybe it was live and he had that uh, somebody, oh, yeah. there's some two a conversation over there but he had that that look you've seen oh yeah in concussions before when he set up when the eyes are I mean they're there but they're not there yeah, you're like dude yeah. does not know where he is yeah yeah but, I mean so I I based on all of that I was like well you've probably that's gonna be tough for Alabama if they advance because when they've got that lineup together that is by far and away their best lineup when you can right. play those four guards you know you can play Estrada Sears Reitzel Ryland Griffin and then play Nelson as your five. It's a small lineup, but it's the lineup that is their best lineup. Yeah. And you and, finally had the metrics show that. The no, no doubt. Show yeah. That, yeah. And you finally had it together against Charleston, together and completely healthy. And you saw the result there. Then you had it early against Grand Canyon. Was it going quite as well as it did against Charleston? But they were still playing better. But so I thought. I thought based on all that, you had seen the end of it. So when I saw that Oates said that after the game, I was like, man, that's it's actually a pretty big storyline coming into that North Carolina game, just because. That is by far and away their best five. Yeah. Uh, JM says uh, concussions are brutal, guys. I played college football and suffered many through my career, especially when you have one in the recent past. Getting another one absolutely sucks. He's been through it. Uh, apparently, in, in a period of time, it happens quickly. Um, and the, 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 when they start layering on top of each other is when it becomes a, a major concern. I will give Nate Oates grace if for some reason we get to Thursday night and he can't go. I mean, I'm going to uh, – if you're not familiar with what the team is doing, they're flying out today to Los Angeles. Um, d day off today, re treatment, rehab. Tuesday they'll, you know, shoot around and start doing game planning. Wednesday's the official. Um, they're at the – what's it called? The Bitcoin? The what is – what's the Crypto. arena? Crypto.com arena. Crypto.com arena. Bitcoin. It used to be Staples. They're playing at the coin. Yeah, so the, they're in L.A. They'll practice Wednesday publicly, do news conferences. Thursday's the game. We'll see We'll see if Wright's Hill can go. But in that game last night, so he leaves at 6.36, uh, six minutes and 36 seconds going in the first half, and they play the rest of the way. Sears had 13 in the first half. Ryland Griffin had 13, and he played so, so good in this basketball game, as much defensively as he did offensively, trying to hold their big star uh, in, in check defensively. And, and relatively speaking, he did when he was in the game. But then at the end, when the game was sort of out of, out of Alabama's hands and they go on a 10-0 run to end it, it was Mo Diabate that comes off the bench. Incredible, yeah. And you talk about waiting for your moment. And if ever there was a game built for Mo Diabate, who at times I think was leading the nation at one point this season. I don't know if he ended up that way, but he, he was <laughs> leading the nation at one point. Nato joked about this one time. With fouls per minute, the guy was a bull in the china shop. Yeah, he He'd really come was. off the bench and it would yep. be foul, 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 foul. Well, in 18 minutes against Charleston, he only committed two personal fouls. And in 13 minutes last night, only had two personal. Now, Jaron Stevenson, how many minutes did he play? Because he fouled out. <laughs> I mean, he, he Six did, minutes, five fouls. I mean, he was. Yeah. He, he came in and made the most. He played 13 minutes and fouled out. Yeah. <laughs> That's hard to do. But it was one of those games that was just, it was, I don't, you know, I'm not going to say it was the worst officiated game I've ever seen. Well, they but, lost control of it. And it's on both yeah. sides. I mean, yeah. you know, with Alabama winning, this is not sour grapes by people in Alabama saying this. Yeah. It was horribly officiated on both sides. They lost I, control of that game. I actually thought, um, um, I actually thought that the way they called it ended up benefiting Alabama. Well, you said I heard you say that earlier. So explain yourself. Um, Alabama is a average defense, below average defense. Well, below however, average. I mean, they're in the hundreds. I yeah. guess that's top third. But. Yeah. However, you want to call Alabama's defense. And last night, the officials let both teams play. And now that's, that doesn't play well into Alabama scoring a lot of points like they usually do, but by letting them play, it also allows them to not have to be perfect defensively. It allows you to be physical defensively. And they were able, I think, to, to run, run Gulf um, – I keep wanting to call them Gulf Coast, Grand Canyon. Same number, off, uh, same letters. <laughs> off, of, off of the ball and get a little bit more physical with them. You know, it was, it was a horribly officiated game both ways. 
But in the end, I think, you know, it sort of helped both teams defensively. And that was Alabama's weak point. They were able to score enough points to win the game. I, I just thought it was just, a, as Nate will tell you in a moment, a blue-collar win. And by playing, by allowing them to play that way sort of allowed them to be a little bit more less perfect defensively. Well, you, you know, Nate Oates got a technical early because he was upset with the officiating, Jim. And, and I mean, it ended up free throws were 37-22. to 22. Now, four of those came from technicals on Nate Oates and Nick Pringle smash smashing a clipboard a nick pringle experience is something else man he, he gives you a lot doesn't <laughs> yeah. he yeah uh, <laughs> and as they were joking on the broadcast the two analysts why does nick pringle have a, bill, a, a, a clipboard, a clipboard yeah. in his hand yeah you know what's funny is uh, i had to make the transition from my house to abc 3340 you were handling the post game here i had to go to the zone at 3340 so i caught a little bit of uh, halftime with uh passing and tom stipe and chris stewart and i was listening and Chris, uh, right at the start of the half, he picked up another foul, Pringle did, and Chris had to point out that he's got another personal from that technical That's right. that had been credited to him. And Chris said, if you weren't here earlier, uh, you know, Nick Pringle, after a what he felt was a bad call or a missed call, slammed a clipboard down and it broke out onto the court and he was assessed a technical on the Alabama bench. And Bassick said, why did Nick Pringle have a clipboard? Like, that was everybody's question. Yeah. Why was Nick Pringle holding a clipboard? That's Where what they, they said in the game. It's like, yeah. man, Nick Pringle draws up his own plays when he's, <laughs> when he's over there. I mean, it's a heck of an experience. Yeah. He gives you some key minutes, but he does stuff like that. But my point was going to be, before I mentioned the technicals, you know, Oates got his because he thought it was imbalanced to start the game. He was trying, right. to, he was trying to do the old fire my team up and, and now point out to the refs, you guys have missed a lot. I need to start getting some calls. That was the Oates thought there, but still 37 to 22. Free throws. Now, it wasn't a bad thing for Alabama because Gulf, Gulf Coast, you've done it to me now. <laughs> Grand Canyon was awful from the stripe. So sending them to the stripe wasn't the worst worst thing in the world for no, Alabama. It all played Alabama's way. We're going to get to uh, uh, more postgame. Nate Oates talking about the way the game was played last night and the guts of his team to make it to the Sweet 16 where they will play number one seed North Carolina. So chalk. Uh, there in the West with North Carolina and Alabama meeting up there uh, in the Sweet 16 coming up on Thursday night. I think it is an 845 Central tip. Is that uh, correct? I believe that is correct. Yeah. I had those tip times last yeah. night. Uh, the show being brought to you uh, in part today uh, by our friends uh, with the Geico 500, Talladega Super Speedway race weekend coming up just under a month away, April 20th. On that Saturday and Sunday, April 21st, the first of Talladega's two races this season. It'll feature NASCAR's biggest um, race on the high banks of Talladega. It's in the NASCAR Cup Series. You'll also have the ARCA and the Xfinity Series rolling as well. Guarantee your spot for the Geico 500 weekend experience by going to the website, uh, talladegasuperspeedway.com, talladegasuperspeedway.com, or you can call them up. 877-GO-TO-DEGA, 877-GO-TO-DEGA for tickets. Fans can also stay connected on the Talladega Super Speedway on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Talladega, at Talladega for the latest Speedway news there. And don't forget, you can enhance your race weekend. We had a chance to tour this the other day. The Talladega Garage Experience presented by Cool Ray gets you right into the garage area and all the fun you get being inside uh, the garage area at one of the great races. It's all coming up April 20th and 21st. Get your tickets, talladegasuperspeedway.com. Looking forward to that race weekend coming up. We'll have a lot of fun leading up to that. Rockstar, give me um, cut number six. Nate Oates, uh, after the win last night, goes to the podium. And you talk about a team win, Brownie. I mean, you start, I mean, Mark Sears is unworldly. He's a second team All American, deserves that. And he was the glue. But at some point during that game, you had a big Sam Walters three. You had Mo Diabate at the end. You had Ryland Griffin defensively and throughout. I mean, everybody contributed. Estrada, just a, a steady Eddie. He's ready there all the time. Nate Oates talked about this after the win last night that put Alabama in the Sweet 16. Sears wasn't going to lose. He wasn't letting us lose tonight. And a lot of that was how blue collar and tough and you know, he was great on defense. I thought it was best defensive game. So we kind of get to – we lead the country in scoring. We play fast. Our offense has been number one in the country for a large part of the year. But we really try to build the program on toughness, blue collar, and it hasn't been what we'd like to see all the year. 
it was there tonight. Without it, we don't win tonight. Yeah, and that's 100% true. Yeah, there, there's no doubt. I, I was going to go look at the time on the clock when they started that 13-3 run. And, I mean, that was so impressive because it felt like the game was was starting to slip away a little bit. And then they hit that 13-3 run, I think, and all of that started in the under four uh, timeout done away. Uh, I mean, that was just so, – yeah, it was 62-61 uh, at, the, uh, at the media timeout there. And Grand Canyon, I don't know if you know what their final point total was, 61. That's right. I mean, Alabama did not allow them to score again uh, after that final media timeout in the under four. And, 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 I mean, that was just an impressive run to finish the game there for the Crimson Tide to go to on the 10-0 run and close it out when it, it, was, it was not far from slipping away from Alabama. Yeah. Um, Grand Canyon just seemed to be playing with house money. They seemed to be gaining confidence. Uh, it was a messy game, which is their only chance of winning it, was to draw Alabama into their style of play, which they did. Um, but I have to say, as much criticism as Alabama's defense has gotten this year, and it's all been deserved, that was one of their better efforts, especially early. It just seemed like they had more fire on the defensive end. And specifically, I thought Rylan Griffin, I mean, he calls out Mark Sears, but I thought Rylan Griffin was so important to what went on. And you guys can talk about the emotional roller coaster of Nick Pringle. But Pringle brought it last night. He had some good passes. Yeah. He had a couple of key uh, dunks. I, I thought Pringle played a great game last night. If he plays that against Baycott coming up, he and Grant Nelson will have to have a day against Baycott. But, you know, I'd rather have Pringle in the game than uh, on a flight with Taylor. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's just part of the Pringle experience. Yeah. Um, you know, he almost um, – he almost got in a little bit of a scuffle there. One of the best things Mark Sears did was settling him down. I think it was Brennan, uh, Duke Brennan, if I'm not mistaken, um, number 24 for them, who, who's – I've, I've, yeah, I've only watched to... him – I've only watched him in this – one. Uh, well, I watched them the other night. I didn't really notice anything um, in the first game. But watching him – uh, against St. Mary's, but watching him last night, he had a couple. He was trying to get under Alabama's skin. I'm That's not right. going to call him a dirty player, but what he did to Pringle there, I mean, he grabbed his shoulder and was kind of trying to spin him down to the ground. I didn't, I didn't blame Pringle for getting pissed about that. Yeah, not at all. And uh, Nate took him out of the game, allowed yeah. him to cool down. When moments later, he broke our clipboard, but <laughs> in the cooling down process, in the cooling down it process, technical, yes, yeah, he's uh, what's that Ellen DeGeneres uh, animated movie where everybody's emotions. Uh, oh, I know which one you're talking about. I can't remember yeah. the name of it. Inside uh, Out, yeah. yeah. Inside Big Out. Yeah. Pring, Pringle is the one where the, he's red and just... <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, that way he's right. Pringle almost got in a fight. Uh, do the, and, and again, you don't want to fight, but I, I don't blame him for being upset about that. Sears had to sell him down. Oates takes him out to cool down. And in the process of cooling down, he breaks a clipboard <laughs> and gets a technical. Yeah. That's the Nick Pringle experience. Uh, but hey, they won and they moved on. And uh, Alabama... Uh, keeps rolling dan wetzel on the show today we'll talk about the tournament uh coming up uh starting hour two at uh, 10 o'clock since we were last with you uab got beat uh in a heartbreaking loss and auburn got shocked we'll talk about that in the rest of the tournament as uh, we move throughout uh, the day your best and worst of the weekend is coming up as well show being brought to you in part by our friend dr b lt's not here he's on vacation or as the sign says he's gone fishing <laughs> do you think lt do you think lt could bait a hook uh no no me either no. gone fishing is a joke just letting you know he's on vacation but his hair down on the beach looking fantastic. Oh, uh, there's no doubt about it blowing in that uh, gulf breeze uh, lt growing his hair back thanks to our man Dr. B, T3hair.net to find out more, T3hair.net. Now, Dr. B is doing this, uh, been doing this for a very long time. Uh, you start in his office, you do some online consultations, you select your, uh, your method of growing your hair back. It is not some cookie cutter deal where he just does the same thing for everybody. It's one of those things where it is tailored specifically to your needs. That's what Lance did. Lance chose after a visit in the office and the online consultation as well, uh, his path with Dr. B. And uh, you can do the same. T3hair.net is the website. T3hair.net. Get the free consultation to see if Dr. B can help you. It's, it's not for everyone. Some, some people have just waited too long, and that's unfortunate. Dr. B is not going to drag you through the process uh, if, it's too long, if it's, it's too late for you. So get that risk-free consultation. 205-628-9675. That is 205-628-9675 or T3hair.net. 
Net. And we'll get to your best and worst of the weekend. Keep them rolling in starting right now. Brown will give you some of those, and we'll uh, talk about Auburn's loss and the reaction to that. Best and worst brought to you by Hemp Hill for all your plumbing, cooling, and heating needs. Trust the name Birmingham's trusted since 1954. That's Hemp Hill Services. Call them up now, 205-229-2090. 205 229 Two zero nine zero. It's the great folks right there with Hemp Hill Services. We're back in a moment on TNR. Follow John Lunsford on Twitter at JLunts. It's that time of year again. The Legacy Swap and Drop promotion is back. It's bigger than ever. Swap your current auto loan or RV loan to Legacy and drop your interest rate and monthly payment. Don't miss out on this opportunity to save big with our friends at Legacy Credit Union. Not a member yet? That's okay. You too can save by becoming a member today. Head over to SwapAndDrop.com. Apply in minutes. That's SwapAndDrop.com. Or visit one of their nine greater Birmingham area branches. Limited time offer. Terms and conditions may apply. See Credit Union for details. Federally insured by the NCU. Let's face it, a home is one of the most powerful assets you can have. And our friends at Mortgage Right want to help you build wealth through home ownership. Mortgage Right is all about providing competitive rates, a variety of loan products, and a multitude of resources for a seamless home buying experience. They treat their borrowers like family and are always looking to bring more happy homeowners under their roof. See more by visiting mortgageright.com slash TNR today and start living. That's mortgageright.com slash TNR. NMLS 2239 equal housing lender. Fire damage to your home or business is something you never want to consider. Ryan Brown here from the next round. But in the horrible event it happens, Dry Tech is here to help. They respond quickly and will reply to you within 20 minutes when you call 205-637-0143. They're working for you, the customer, not the insurance company. They've got five crews ready to go 24-7. Don't call the insurance company first. Call Dry Tech. Just remember this website, mydrytech.com. That is mydrytech.com. Stop by the New York Butcher Shop and pick up the finest in certified Angus Prime Beef steaks and burgers, premium pork chops, ribs, and all-natural chicken cut to order just for you. Their chef-prepared entrees and side dishes are the perfect dinner-to-go choice for your family and are ready to heat at home. With a great selection of fine wines and desserts, the New York Butcher Shop is your one-stop dinner shop. Two locations to serve you, Cahaba Heights and on Highway 119 in Greystone, the New York Butcher Shop. Rare quality, well-done service. Get ready to level up your fandom with the Autograph app. Co-founded by the legendary Tom Brady himself, this app is your one-stop shop for everything college sports. Access to all the best sports content, exciting fan challenges, and exclusive rewards. Think crazy discounts on tickets, limited edition merch, and much more. Just look at this. Autograph hooked up six lucky fans with tickets to the Arkansas-Alabama game for just $16 a ticket. That's what they call true fan pricing. Ready to join the party? Download the free Autograph app today and use the code TNR for exclusive access. Hey, there's nothing worse than waking up to a plumbing problem. Don't get caught in a flooded house. Call the guys at Hemp Hill Services. Adam, Chad, and the team at Hemp Hill are the only ones I trust to fix it and fix it right the first time. Hemp Hill Services does it right and always at a fair price. For all of your plumbing, cooling, and heating needs, trust the name that Birmingham has trusted since 1954. That is Hemp Hill Services. Call now, 205-229-2090. That's 205-229-2090. Back with you on the next round as we roll on. Um, we're going to get to the Auburn situation in just a second uh, and what went on and how this season ended way, way too abruptly. Situation. It's a situation. Well, I mean, it, it, was, a, it was an incident that a lot of people are blaming one player on, and I, I've got a different view on that Okay. in just a second. You? I mean, we'll, we'll get to it. We'll get yeah, to yeah, it. We'll but first, to uh, we continue to celebrate Alabama. <laughs> in the locker room they advance on they're staying out there from spokane to la today uh, and then they'll work their way to a thursday night game wednesday open practice as we always do 
in the Sweet 16. That uh, locker room update brought to you by the guys who make your locker room full of great gear. That's our friends at Bandwagon. Bandwagonsports.com. Bandwagonsports.com. And uh, that's where you go to find all the great gear, including if you're headed to the beach still. Not everybody done away. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. Not everybody goes all four days, right, to the beach or all seven days. Sometimes it's a weekend beach trip, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. In fact, yeah. I've got a, a midweek uh, trip coming up at some point. Maggie and I are just going to sneak down for a very inexpensive Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Oh, good for you. Yeah. A very inexpensive Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah. You catch it right. That's the <laughs> cheapest, <laughs> cheapest time to go. They've got all the great uh, beach gear, the swim gear, and, of course, all the team gear at Bandwagon Sports. Find it at Bandwagon Sports New Year. Bandwagon Sports com that is bandwagonsports.com dude i've got three in college right now including my wife who's only halfway through her four-year doctrine or whatever it is right. she's getting at duke um I'm, whatever I'm, it I'm is i'm starting i'm starting to take um some uh, price point beach trips like i did when i was in college Sneak them in, sneak yeah. in the trip. Sneak them in on a Monday through Wednesday, skip a couple classes. Drive Are, there in the morning, spend about two hours, drive right back. Yeah. Hey, seriously. <laughs> you saw the beach. Hey, money, is, my pockets are short right now, so I'm uh, I'm going to be taking. Uh, well, by the way, hey. we went to Troy this weekend, which is about a two-hour, 15 drive, 2.15. Uh, uh, not, not when everybody's going to the beaches. Went not. to the beach Saturday, four and a half hours. Yeah. Four, four and, and, and a half, half hours, hours to get to Troy. Uh, wow. Yeah, wow. It's, it's rough. Um, the toddler. Dunaway's going to have to do uh, like uh, the Grand Canyon trip with Chevy Chase, you know. And, yeah. <laughs> You're not going to look? All right, let's go. Yeah, yeah, let's yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Uh, so, you know, at some point I'll be like asking you guys if I can have a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday off because I got to sneak down to the beach. May not be able to go to 30A anymore either for a short period until we get everybody out of college. <laughs> got good news. Though. Yeah, I, I'll tell you off the air, but I got some good news about college yesterday. A little scholarship money. Yeah, it's going to save me a little, save me a little money. Way. It's going to save way. me a little money. Um, now to the Auburn thing. First of all, I went to Zach Bryan, my best of the weekend, Zach Bryan concert. I had actually now with Alabama going to Sweet 16. What I had a, a weekend for I you. I had a hell of a weekend. Yeah, you did. Uh, but Zach Bryan concert Friday night. Some of you went Saturday night. Just uh, one of my favorite entertainers. Uh, just a wonderful concert. Your daughter went. My oldest daughter went. Uh, she came home from college just for that concert. She had to go right back to Mobile. But uh, she said it was phenomenal. She loved uh the concert said he didn't do anything but sing songs there was not a whole lot of talk and he just he just played songs for about two two and a half hours yeah with a bunch of edison lights there's not a lot of uh yeah. pre-production yeah. or anything like a couple of video screens nothing's yeah. blowing up he just sits there and sings eventually rockstar will play a zach bryan song uh in the uh, lounge at some point before mm -hmm. i die uh mm -hmm. you would love the lyrics buddy you'd love the lyrics okay. so uh so i get there brownie <laughs> and i'm going with tr uh, one of our great viewers. Okay. I'm meeting his, he, he and his wife and his dad at the concert. They had an extra ticket. Yep. And I bought it for, I guess, a little more in face value. I paid a price for it, but way, way under what they were going for uh, the night of the show. Like they were up three fifty, four fifty a pop. Uh, I paid way less than that. Uh, but I get to sit with, with TR. I meant to send Tyler some pictures. Maybe I'll do it later on. Had a great time talking to him. He and his beautiful wife. Uh, their daughter Sedona, because he they worked in Arizona for a while. He followed my trip last year to Arizona. Named their baby Sedona. They loved Arizona so much. That's a cool name. So we I've had never a heard great that. time at the concert. But anytime I got up to get a drink, anytime uh, I got stopped, people talking to me, <laughs> and I had three people actually stop and shoot a video with me. Right. One of them was an Alabama fan who was very happy with me. Two of them were good-natured Auburn fans who only wanted to talk about this. Rockstar, hit it. <laughs> I've got Auburn beating Houston. L Jimmy Dunaway picking Auburn to win the national championship. Who did you pick to win it last year? <laughs> uh, is it Alabama? I think I had UConn. Jimmy Lamont. Really? Now, yeah. This is where, this is where people are going to say Jim's just trying to landmine Auburn. I'm not. I'm trying to win this thing. I know. That's where I'm going to say Jim does not want to lose the bracket. And also, Jim would never do that to Auburn because of his affinity for the Pearls. That's exactly right. This is not a landmine. This is – it comes down to me to Auburn-UConn. I think those – Really? But, yeah. I think those are two the two best teams – In the whole tournament? In the country, yeah. Do you really? In the country. You getting the Braves thing wrong. That was just a That's state right. bet. That's right. This is worse than losing a state bet. Yeah. Uh, I, mean, I just I, don't I hope the they don't lose to Yale. No, oh, Lance. Oh, I forgot Lance said it's that. It's going to all come back on you. If if they lose any game after Yale, I don't think you're getting a lot of heat. But if they were to get upset by the Bulldogs, yeah. whoa. Yeah. 
Yeah, they did, Lance. I'd forgot did. Lance even said that. Yeah, me yeah. too, me too. So uh, at the concert, I kept telling people, it's I'm not playing a joke. I really believed at this time Auburn was built for March. Well, they that, were built for March. They were deep, uh, 10 deep, was 11 till Lior got hurt, 10 deep, uh, change parts. They were interchangeable parts. There was no way Yale was going to beat them. I thought they would beat San Diego State. Uh, I guess is that who they would have played, and then or UAB or UAB, UAB. Yeah, San Diego State, and then it would be up. UConn and Auburn. I just figured I'd roll the dice and see if Auburn could beat UConn. The worst bracket I have ever filled out because I was trying to win, and I'm ending up losing this thing because I tried to win it instead of playing for second. So I, um, yeah, I mean that's a that's a weird statement. So you lost it because you tried to win it. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Uh, usually, so I, if you had played for second, I mean, usually I play it so conservative. You guys have never noticed it, but I've always been chalky, chalk, chalk until this year. Until this year, and what happened for the fifth time <laughs> ever? All the ones and twos <laughs> are in the Just Sweet Sixteen. Through, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I uh, wrong year not to be chalky. Yeah. Uh, the the feedback I got, like I had several people at church yesterday that are like, uh, I don't need to be around Dunaway. I love you guys, but I need to be around Dunaway. I had one person that say, tell Dunaway I'm coming after him. I said, well, you're going to have to beat little T to him. Mm. I think she's just ready to get back in. I'm glad uh, we had a whole country between us. Yes. Um, We may not be talking. But the feedback, the feedback I've gotten, Dunaway, is that what made it a landmine is people genuinely believed you believed it. Like That's what every video was, Brown. Like a guy was, I forget his name, uh, and I got that video, but with Forrester out, I didn't want to put too much on Tyler. But he starts shooting outside of the BJCC Legacy Arena, and he was like, I'll never forgive this guy for picking Auburn. And I was like, I really thought they'd win. The-. And he's like, that's the problem. You really <laughs> believed it. I, I mean, that is the thing that everybody was saying was like, and, and Lance has said this too. Like I, I would like to use Lance as many times that I'd like to use the landmine in my favor for Lance's lock or, you know, the Rams or whatever. But Jim has to genuinely believe it for the landmine to actually work. And you genuinely believe this. This was not an act by you. No, 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 no. I I mean, I think we've established on this show the only way the landmine is in play is if Jim genuinely believes what he's saying. Otherwise, we would do it all the time just to have fun with it. Alabama's exactly where I thought Alabama would be. I had them go into the Sweet 16. I did too. Um, Auburn is not where I thought they would be. They lost to Yale. And uh, our Odie's Sound of the Day brought to you by the great Odie's there in the original location. In Crestline? Crestline Village, where we'll be Wednesday night for trivia. I'm filling in for Lance. I'll be uh, with Rockstar and Will here. How about that? And then the new beautiful location there in Homewood, where yeah. we did a show last Thursday night, a Sanford watch party. Great locations. I had a chance to eat two different meals there last week. Great food yeah, as South well. of the Border Roll Up is what I got. Rodney's Cheeseburgers are famous. The Diablo, the Big Cup Cocktails, and Wednesday night, Rockstar, me, Will Haver on trivia. We start about 8 o'clock, and it's award-winning trivia at the Crestline location. Also go see them at the Edgewood location in Homewood. It's a Birmingham institution, Odie's Tavern. Um, the Chad Baker Mazzara ejection is what everybody seems to focus on, and it's big, man. He's one of their best players. I said all last week, and even in Nashville when we were up there, the guy is one of the, he's the spark plug. He's one of the heartbeats of this team. And he gets ejected early on. I got a couple of sound bites I want you to listen to, and then we'll talk about that. First, Bruce Pearl on CBM being ejected early in the game. Now, way back on Friday, but remember, it was after our show, so it's our first chance to really talk about it. We were in foul trouble um, from the very beginning. Uh, obviously, uh, the decision to flagrant two, um, you know, Chad Baker, that's a, that's a pretty tough call. Um, he had gotten hit about five seconds earlier, got tangled up, got a little bit of an elbow. They let it go. Maybe nobody saw it. And about five seconds later, Chad hit him. It was inappropriate. Um, clearly a flagrant one. The fact that it was elevated to a flagrant two is a decision that the official had to make. But it's obviously a tremendous impact on the on the outcome. Chad is one of our best players. He's uh, one of our very best playmakers. And uh, was a huge part of um, our game plan, and so to lose him in that situation was uh, was really really disruptive to our team on both ends of the floor. And, and it absolutely was. And you know, was the contact strong enough to rise to a flagrant two? Probably not. But I felt like. But when you size a guy up and throw an elbow, it's I, just. I think they were judging him on intent. Yeah, I don't disagree with you at all. Yeah. 
And, and, and that's the whole reason they have this, right, is no. to go look and make a judgment like that, even though it's hard to judge in 10, and, and say, you know, this is a different level foul. I mean, it's the whole reason they've instituted the rule and they've allowed review for it so that the officials can go look at that and say, you know, what do I think happened here? I mean, you can't go to Chad Baker Mazar and say, hey, by the way, what was your intent there? You yeah. know, tell me, the officials have to, have to try to judge that. And when a guy sizes a guy up and throws an elbow – I mean, you, you, even in Dunaway, even if it's not a flagrant two, even if it should have been a flagrant one, you can't put yourself in that situation. That's you just exactly, cannot do it. That's exactly right. Pringle broke a guy's nose last night, but as they were saying in the broadcast, he has no idea the guy's yeah. coming going to be there. He's, he's preparing to jump yeah. up, and he just as he's jumping, he plasters this guy in the nose. There was no intent to that there. Um, and it did look like Chad Baker Mazzara was, was lining the guy up and he threw an elbow. It was 100% retaliation. You saw it going down the floor. Yeah, the, even Bruce said uh, that. Yeah, the, yeah. the kid who was the villain in every 80s, 90s frat movie I ever watched, that, that smirky little white kid from Yale, it, nobody liked him watching that game. I don't even think Yale players liked that guy. Uh, Mahoney, Maroney, Baloney, whatever his name was, he threw a cheap shot at yeah, him, right? Yeah, but I mean, even Bruce Pearl said it was retaliation. Yeah. I mean, he said, here's what happened on the previous trip, but that's why retaliation so often gets caught is because it's done generally in a more demonstrative way after a play is that's over. That's exactly right. And, the, and, and to Bruce's point, they didn't see the first one. You so they don't know that's retaliation. That's right. You can't retaliate. You can't retaliate. And then afterwards, Dylan Cardwell, one of my favorite Auburn players, uh, had this to say uh, in the postgame locker room. Here's, here's Dylan. Um, just not to take things grant for granted, you know, and realize that, you know, uh, are the things that we think are important are as important as they are, you know. Like, throwing elbows, is that going to win the championship? No. And so just not letting our things be, that, that feel good in the moment one that dictate our future. Well, I've always liked him as a player, but yeah. I gained a ton of respect for him as a person and a leader with that statement right there. I mean, that's just the honesty there of saying, you know, look, our guy let us down. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to ignore that. Is that going to win? Is that championship basketball? That is not championship basketball. Getting yeah. thrown out in the first round of the NCAA tournament. That's not going to win you a championship. Beca that became important to you. Yeah. And it made you feel better, but it wasn't important for the team that's for right. you to do that. Yep. And... And, and it 100% and it, it was personal at that point. Now, that being said, Chad baker Mazar is human, right? And we've all made mistakes like that. I think Auburn fans need to let this guy off the mat a little bit. There's been a lot of Auburn fans. Uh, many of them have reached out and said, we still love you, we support you. But there have been some that the blame of this loss went on him. And <laughs> Brownie, uh, I am well, so sorry. But, okay, now you're down to nine guys no, I know. on the Auburn Tigers Nine guys against freaking Yale. I mean, it's not all on Chad Baker Mazar. At some it, it point, not. those other nine guys who are much better than the Yale players should have played their game and won that basketball well, game. Look what San Diego State did to Yale last yeah. night. Well, two things on that. Number one, you're probably not where you are. Now, I'm not going to say you're not in the tournament, but you're probably not where you are without Chad Baker Mazar. Would you grant me that as a team? Uh, probably not. I, yeah, you, you, you yeah. take him Jani out. Jani Broom, Chad Baker, Mazzara in yeah. my book. Yeah. So now you're still, I'm not saying Auburn's not a tournament team. Auburn's probably not the SEC tournament champion or a four seed without Chad Baker, Mazzara. But the flip side of that is you're probably not out of the tournament. Well, you're probably not out of the tournament that day if Chad ba Baker, Mazzara doesn't do what he did. All of that said, Auburn had every chance to win that game without him and erase that mistake and live to talk about it another day and play San Diego State last night for a chance to also be in the Sweet 16. They have now essentially ended two straight seasons in the NCAA tournament, the free throw strike. That's what yep. it boils down to. I mean, the Houston game, they were terrible, specifically Jani Broom, unfortunately, as good as he is at everything else. He melted down at the free throw stripe against Houston last year. They had every opportunity to upset Houston, just like a and almost did last night. Every opportunity to upset Houston in Birmingham and move on to the Sweet 16 last year. And they had every opportunity to beat Yell at the stripe. And in both times, they've missed key free throws where you can't say it's anything but pressure. Yeah. I mean, when Donaldson and uh, KD Johnson miss those free throws, those guys make those free throws in a regular season game at Neville. Those guys probably make those free th throws in a regular season game on the road. But NCAA tournament pressure and the game being on the line, it appeared to get to them. And that's basically two straight years that's happened to Auburn. It's, that's hard to swallow. It sucks you lost Chad Baker, Missouri. 
Uh, it sucked Alabama lost right cell. Yeah. But what happened down the stretch with Alabama last night? Well, Mo Diabate, I mean, it's not a position for position switch, but yeah. you needed somebody. And Mo Diabate gave you his best game as an Alabama player. Without right cell, they gutted up. Yeah. And they, I mean, right cell, I think, is their best on, on percentage, their best or one of their best three point shooters, him and Sears. Uh, losing him was huge. And, and Alabama stepped up and finished the game last night. The other nine players in rotation for Auburn. They didn't. They didn't go beat Yale. They didn't. They didn't stop them. Now, you had a guy that was shooting the lights out. That usually doesn't shoot the lights out. Just like Kentucky. Talk about the kid yeah, from like Oakland. Goki, yeah. But um, I, you know, you can blame it on CBM if you want to. But I thought it was a failure by the other nine guys not picking up their brother there. Um, okay, that's Auburn's loss. And um, UAB and Sanford were in the tournament. UAB gave it a fighting effort. Sanford uh, did as well. Uh, your thoughts, your best and worst of the weekend as we roll on. Uh, and the rest of the show, Wetzel at the top of the hour. Talladega Super Speedway is where we're heading. A lot of great things to get at the Talladega Super Speedway race weekend coming up the 20th and 21st of April. That includes the Talladega Garage Experience, the most immersive garage experience in NASCAR. You get access to NASCAR Cup Series Garage Bay viewing areas. Uh, there's just like a knee-high, waist-high fence separating you from your favorite drivers, watching them work on the car and such like that. Um, you get to uh, be around the victory lane, uh, all that going on. Passes are $89 on Sunday, $39 for kids 12 and younger. You cannot beat that. That's to the Talladega Garage Experience presented by Cool Ray there. There's unbelievable camping going on over at Talladega. Also on Saturday night, you get uh, Walker Hayes in concert. Walker Hayes in concert on Saturday night. Your ticket to the Geico 500 on Sunday gets you in to see that. How do you get those tickets for the great race? You go to the website, visit talladegasuperspeedway.com, talladegasuperspeedway.com, or call 877-GO-TO-DEGA, 877-GO-TO-DEGA. More on March Madness as we roll on right here on TNR. Follow the next round on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Next Round Live. Remember the name Way to Wellness if you're battling weight loss in your life. I'm Jim Dunaway from the next round. There was a time I was over 216 pounds until Way to Wellness helped me lose 45 pounds. And now for over two years, they've helped me keep that weight off. Here's their website, aplanforme.com, aplanforme.com. That's a great name for a website because there's no cookie cutter plan. Everything is designed specifically for you. No contract, no sign up fees, and your first consultation is free at Way to Wellness. Man, I love a good meal. I'm Jim Dunaway. A good meal is what you get with my friend Sterling at Champy's Chicken on Highway 119 in Alabaster. We're talking great southern fried chicken, wonderful sides, hand-cut chicken fingers, poor boys, and those Mississippi Delta recipe tamales. You've got a perfect menu for everybody. Champy's Chicken is perfect for watching the big game or taking a meal to the lake house, down to the coast, or stay in the restaurant and dine in in a great atmosphere. It's all made fresh to order right there on 119 in Alabaster, Champy's Chicken. Fire damage to your home or business is something you never want to consider. Ryan Brown here from the next round. But in the horrible event it happens, Dry Tech is here to help. They respond quickly and will reply to you within 20 minutes when you call 205-637-0143. They're working for you, the customer, not the insurance company. They've got five crews ready to go 24-7. Don't call the insurance company first. Call Dry Tech. Just remember this website, mydrytech.com. That is mydrytech.com. Get ready to level up your fandom with the Autograph app. Co-founded by the legendary Tom Brady himself, this app is your one-stop shop for everything college sports. Access to all the best sports content, exciting fan challenges, and exclusive rewards. Think, crazy discounts on tickets, limited edition merch, and much more. Just look at this. Autograph hooked up six lucky fans with tickets to the Arkansas-Alabama game for just $16 a ticket. That's what they call true fan pricing. Ready to join the party? Download the free Autograph app today and use the code TNR for exclusive access. It's time to pull the trigger on the Next Round merch that you've been eyeing. We know there's a lot to choose from at nextround.store, so here's a few of our favorite picks. If you want to match LT and Brown, go with a TNR logo hoodie and throw in one of Dunaway's favorite hats. Any of them will do. The backroom's go-to is the classic logo t-shirt, while my personal favorite is the light blue TNR crew neck. All of these items can be found at nextround.store and are EG approved. Rest assured, your order will be packed with lots of love from us here at the next round. Head over to nextround.store to start filling up your cart. Is Coke Zero Sugar the best Coke ever? Man, that's a bold question. 
but it's got that irresistible taste to back it up. One thing's for sure, when you've got an irresistible tasty match like zero sugar and zero calories, something sensational is bound to happen. It's too bad you can't taste it with your ears because this Coke Zero Sugar tastes amazing. Truthfully, it's hard to put into words, and that's my job. You'll have to take a taste for yourself. Coke Zero Sugar, best Coke ever? Back with you on the next <laughs> round. <laughs> finally happened to you. It finally happened to you, yeah. and not my sign off. Uh, mine's the one still standing right here. Yeah, Who's Lance's national championship? Here? Uh, I think Lance has Houston. Okay, still alive, barely, but still alive. Still alive. That was a classic game, Texas A&M and Houston last night. They A&M. Yeah, I mentioned this. I, I tweeted this last night. They got it to overtime. An incredible shot to make over. Just what March Madness is made of. That yeah. it is almost. I, I, I see if I could describe this. One of one of the coolest sounds to me. Last second shot, it gets let go, and the crowd almost goes quiet, everybody in anticipation. Then you hear the buzzer, and then you hear the sound of a made shot. The, the mic'd up net. The mic'd up rim and net. It is just the most beautiful sound, and then the immediate crowd reaction. I rewound that like 15 times during the break just to watch that one moment and just – you know, I've just watched different people's reactions to it. Yeah. That is such a cool moment. It, sh- it should be a trash open. Just that sound. <laughs> it's a one shining moment, if you yeah. think. It so is it a very one, shining moment. It should be one, but, uh, one shining moment. Royal Payne, Texas A&M out-rebounded Houston by something like 20 and had more free throws and still lost the game yeah. last night. Jamal Shedd was an unbelievable player last yeah, night. Yeah, I mean, but if they could have forced that second overtime, Shedd had fouled out. That yeah. game, I think A&M going to win that game in the second overtime. Yeah, they had but, some but kid the, shooting free throws at the end that had shot four, four free throws all year. Did you see how nervous he was? The kid looked like he was a middle schooler. I, I thought he was going to throw up. Yes. And like, they can't be, like, players kept coming over and hugging him. Giving Check, the, checking his pulse. Yeah, I mean, I thought the poor kid was going to throw it was like up. Old yeah. wrestling thing. They kept holding up his hands. And then he, he missed that first one. And I was like, oh, boy, the second one may not even yeah. grab a rim. Yeah. But AM played too much hero ball in that overtime. It was like yeah, somebody responded to my tweet in the right. It was like every shot was like a last second shot for them. Yeah. They, they took no smart shots. It was just they had every opportunity to win that game. Yeah, they rushed it. They rushed it there. All right. Show being brought to you. We'll get to your best and worst of the weekend. Show being brought to you by our friends at uh, Gutter Cap. Uh, man, how long have we known C. Stu? Just had a Forever. birthday back on Friday. Uh, love that guy, Chris Stewart. He's the guy that owns Gutter Cap. Uh, they've been doing great work around here for years and years. Um, if you don't know what Gutter Cap is, uh, you use Gutter Cap. They'll come out, clean out your gutters one last time, and then, just like the name says, they'll put a cap over the gutter, and you never have to worry about them again. Gutters do such an important job for your home, um, and they're absolutely huge for you. So get to, get that get that gutter capped one last time, cleaned and capped, and you never have to worry about them again. And with our buddy C. Stu, you get 45% off, free estimates as well. Just go call that number, 205-823-2212, 823-2212, or guttercapbirmingham.com, guttercapbirmingham.com. Cap it, don't snap it with our friends at Gutter Cap. Give me some best and worst of the weekend. Well, there, there's a common theme. A lot of, a lot of our uh, audience was at the Zach Bryan concerts. A lot of best about that. A lot of best about Alabama uh, advancing to the Sweet 16. Uh, a lot of worst about a couple things that has been uh, very consistent with the audience today. The officiating in the Alabama game and Auburn fans pointing out that while Auburn didn't do what it took to win. It was the same set of officials doing the Auburn Yale game. So yeah, those three guys should never even get to go to lunch together again, let alone call a basketball that, game. That, together. that crew did not seem very good, right? Um, well, here here's the deal, Brownie. I we get we get so used to seeing about the same eight or nine, twelve officials at the Alabama Auburn games, right? It's the same group right. of guys mixed and matched together. And then we get to this NCAA tournament, and these guys I've never seen before. I don't know if they're calling the Big East or the Pac-12 or some mixture of most, but I've never, you know, I don't watch enough basketball. I watch a lot of SEC basketball. I don't watch enough other basketball yeah. to notice who these guys are. But it was pretty, pretty you know, curious to hear Gene Sessator? Sterator. Gene Sterator. Sterator. Not Sessator. Gene Sterator 
laughing basically at him. Uh, well, there's no way this is going to be a flagrant yeah, one in yeah. this game. <laughs> they, with this, uh, yeah. Gene, with this rest of flagrant one, he laughed. He goes, not in this game. It <laughs> not won't. in this game. I mean, when the guy who's <laughs> it, a former great official who's in charge of officiating comes on and is laughing at the yeah. way the game's being called, it feels like there's a problem. Yeah, I did. I did get a kick out of that. It was like, Steratore's already laughing. He goes, yeah, a lot of games, maybe that's an F1, and not in this game. That is not going to rise to a flagrant one. Yeah. Um, a lot of the worst, uh, the in Auburn getting bounced is a lot of the worst too. Chris is worse. The screaming. Um, oh no! Last Grand night. Canyon chick drove me crazy. Rockstar, were, uh, this is something you could have only focused on. Were you watching the I, Bama I game? Hear, I got to see a little bit of the second half. I think well, I watched the last ten minutes of okay, it. Okay, well then you every, heard her. Yeah, yeah, it was ridiculous. Yeah. Crowd, crowd mic right here. She's sitting right here. It's the yes. only way it could be happening uh, that way. I mean, it's like it's and like not to address it either. It, it was like the Vandy Whistler. Ten times worse. Yeah, it was awful. I mean, it's so loud. And, like, I mean, these audio engineers, they got to be – they're hearing the same mix we're hearing, you would think. And you would think they could isolate that mic and let's either get somebody to go in there and move it or let's just kill that mic. We'll use every other crowd mic we got except the one that That's apparently right. is clipped to the lapel of the woman that is screaming every single moment of the yeah. game. I thought it was pretty cool, though, when Nate Oates said, I'll have what she's having. <laughs> <Hey> <laughs> Uh, that's an old joke, something about Mary years ago. Uh, yeah. Mary something, what is it? Mary 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 <laughs> Older than something about Mary. Uh, uh, <laughs> another best from Tony, the uh, Texas A&M and Houston game last night. And uh, he brings up the Creighton-Oregon game. Weird game, that Creighton-Oregon game. 13-point Creighton win in double overtime. That's kind of hard to uh, pull off. But uh, and and we could get to this at any point. I know Lunsford has got an update prepared on where the uh, bracket challenge between the three of us stands. Let's that save it right before trash. That would have been a devastating loss for me. It goes without saying to lose Creighton, who I've got in the national championship game. Luckily, I had a large bet on Creighton at mybookie.ag just to just to smooth over my pain as I was cheering for them to lose. <laughs> So, I mean, that's called hedging your bets right there, right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. So uh, that's, I that's, did it all weekend, smart. Yeah, for the most part, to a good a good cause. Yeah, that, that, Until I had money on Grand Canyon last night. Royal Pain follows up, says Creighton, Tennessee is an interesting matchup. I think they pretty much all are. I mean, UConn is a heavy favorite over San Diego State, which is weird. That was just in the uh, Final Four last year, and it's almost the same team, not but, quite. But, but Creighton, Tennessee will be a classic. I think so, I'll, too. I'll go ahead and call it right now. Because I mean, Dalton Connett won't be bad again. I don't think yeah. Ziegler was wonderful to get him there, but that was trending towards a Rick Barnes out. Yep. You know, they were on, they won 62 58 connect. Wasn't hitting. They got where they run everything through him as the Kai Ziegler was great. They need to get back to letting Ziegler and Vescovy and some of the inside guys be more part of the offense and just let Dalton connect when he's open, be Dalton connect. Don't try to run everything through him. Tennessee, flirted with disaster the other day and it was about to be another rick barnes mistake uh blake the saddest part of the weekend um auburn flew chad baker mazar's dad in from the dominican and cbm played four minutes got tossed that does suck mm. man mm. i don't know if that's his only chance to see him this year but markwell best of the weekend is the tar hills region the sweet 16 after not making the tournament last year they're back uh, we'll see. Thing. I mean, it's a skinny number. They're only a four-point favorite over four-seed Alabama. It's the second smallest number of the Sweet 16 weekend. Um, Illinois is a two-point favorite. Somebody said it has snuck down to 3.5, three and a half. Three and a half? Three and a half, three three and and a half since the show started. Check mybookie.ag. I will right now. Bringing part of the show here. Also, our friends at Bud Light bringing you part of the show. And, and our friends at Way to Wellness, your journey to healthy living. Uh, listen, I've been so stressed out lately with a thousand things going on, including all this March madness, and now I'm having to – probably face shooting five free throws or excuse me five three-pointers in d1 gyms different ones over a uh, uh 24-hour period anywhere in the country i'm stressed out about that if i end up losing this bracket challenge which it looks like i'm going to uh that combined with weight of wellness keeping the weight off of me right now leslie and her board certified team helps you lose weight healthy a healthy way of losing weight. Lunsford's doing it. I'm doing it. I've been doing it for years now. I'm in the maintenance program now. Just absolutely a wonderful program. Whether you want to jumpstart your weight loss, maybe you want to control your blood pressure, maybe you want to control your cholesterol, you can do that with your diet, and they'll show you how. No contracts, no sign-up fees, and the first consultation is free. Way to Wellness. The website is a aplanforme.com, a aplanforme.com. Check that out. Uh, it right there is a journey to healthy living. All right, let me correct something. I said the third smallest line, um, Iowa State 
uh, as I mentioned, is a two-point favorite over Illinois. And Tennessee's a two-and-a-half-point favorite over Creighton. After that, Alabama, it's still four at mybookie.ag. I'm not going to say you can't find it at three-and-a-half, but mybookie.ag right now, it's still playing at four, North Carolina. But to put that perspective, the other one seed, UConn, is an 11-point favorite over a five seed in San Diego State. 11 points, UConn, is a favorite in that game. Purdue, a five seed, or a five-point favorite over five seed Gonzaga, who, by the way, is playing the best basketball it looks like they've played in quite a while. Now, Purdue's dominating people, too, but Gonzaga has two very impressive wins to start this tournament. It really comes down to whether or not Zach Eady, who's been a monster so far, whether yeah. or not he's able to stay out of foul trouble. And the other one seed, four... Uh, uh, for Houston, they are a four-point favorite over Duke, who was dominant yesterday. So that just kind of puts it in perspective where Alabama is as a four-point dog against North Carolina. By the way, the Zags in their ninth straight Sweet 16. Yeah. As they ha- handled Kansas. They have not limped in by any stretch. Yeah. And we'll ask Dan Wetzel maybe about this when he comes up in the next segment. Uh, Bill Self said something that pissed me off the other night. I have you watched the whole thing? No, I only okay. saw a clip that, where he it, said I was already thinking about next year. I think I would. I don't want to. I, I don't want to tarnish your opinion here. But before you give it, I would challenge you to go watch the whole soundbite okay. and tell me if you feel the same exact okay. way, other than the pull cord. So, so he he pulled it. He, he he gave a big, you know, a big overall picture that I should have done a better job of building this yep. roster, that kind of thing. Yep. Okay. Because that's who I was blaming it on. I mean, he was already thinking about next year, and I was like, well, who's, whose fault is it you have this roster, dude? Yep. It's you. Yeah, well, he, he took ownership okay. of it in that okay. soundbite. Well, I then, think if you go watch it, you'd feel different about then, it. Then I stand down. Then then I stand down. Because uh, I I don't want to be on your team if you're already thinking about next year if we've got games to go, dude. I think he's saying some of those guys, you're not going to be on my team next year. Yeah, I think yeah. that may be what Thank he's saying. You. All right. Uh, Wetzel's up next, and then it's all you and us the rest of the way. Uh, thank you so much for supporting us over the weekend. Uh, with our trip out to Spokane, all the great responses, all the post games, and coming out to see us at uh, walk ons uh, at Greystone and also at Odie's on Thursday. Just a fun opening weekend with massive television ratings and massive ratings for us as well. We appreciate you guys so much. Michaelson Laser Vision Brownie, tell us, uh, tell us about Michaelson, uh, the best decision LT ever made. You and I tried to get some work from Michaelson, but we weren't candidates. They're so honest with you about who can and can't get LASIK surgery. I mean, I think that says a lot is the fact that uh, they have advertised with us for a very long time. We went in to get evaluated, and they're like, I, you know, we can do it, but it's not going to be the best thing for you. And here's why they explained it to us, and I appreciate that. Uh, Michaelson Laser Vision, 969-8100, 969-8100, or michaelsonlaservision.com. Many of you are getting a tax refund. Put it to good use for your future and your eyesight. See Michaelson in a risk-free evaluation uh, to see if LASIK is right for you. Call Amy now and say, I know Brown and Dunaway didn't measure up, but I want that vision that Lance got. 969-8100 or michaelsonlaservision.com. Take the next round anywhere you go with official next round gear. Buy yours today at nextround.store. Ready to swap from your current auto or RV loan provider and drop your interest rate? Now is your chance. With Legacy Credit Union's annual swap and drop promotion, you can swap your current loan and save with Legacy in minutes. Whether you're a member or a potential member, Legacy Credit Union is here to help you drive into savings. Go online to swapanddrop.com or visit one of their nine locations to take advantage of this incredible offer. Limited time offer terms and conditions may apply. See Credit Union for details. Federally insured by the NCUA. Twin Peaks is the best in the game. Here, you're in the red zone for every college rivalry and divisional matchup all season long. On game day, you never have to decide which teams to watch, only what combination of bites, burgers, wings, and more to order. Plus, where else are your favorite draft beers always poured at a frozen 29 degrees? Only at Twin Peaks, the number one sports bar. Stick around after the sun sets. Twin Peaks is open really late. Wind down with bourbon and late night bites. Only at Twin Peaks. Get ready to level up your fandom with the Autograph app. Co-founded by the legendary Tom Brady himself, this app is your one-stop shop for everything college sports. Access to all the best sports content, exciting fan challenges, and exclusive rewards. Think crazy discounts on tickets, limited edition merch, and much more. Just look at this. Autograph hooked up six lucky fans with tickets to the Arkansas-Alabama game for just $16 a ticket. That's what they call true fan pricing. Ready to join the party? Download the free Autograph app today and use the code TNR for exclusive access.
Hey, let me tell you about our friends at Urology Centers of Alabama. Compassionate and comprehensive urological care with 35 physicians, 17 locations across Alabama. Their patient-centered approach to all of your urological needs. Remember, they've got that new men's health center. It is beautiful, helping men with a wide range of sensitive male issues in a comfortable environment. You can always go online, visit urologycentersalabama.com, schedule an appointment with one of their many urologists today. This hour of the next round is presented by the Birmingham Racecourse Casino. Now featuring seven days of giveaways with your chance to win a share of up to $125,000. The more you visit the Birmingham Racecourse Casino, the more chances you have to win. NASCAR is returning to Talladega Super Speedway for the 2024 GEICO 500 weekend, Saturday, April 20th through Sunday, April 21. Guarantee your 2024 GEICO 500 weekend experience today by visiting talladegasuperspeedway.com or calling 877-GO-TO-DEGA. Enhance your race weekend by adding passes to the Talladega Garage Experience presented by Cool Ray. It is the GEICO 500 weekend, Saturday, April 20th and Sunday, April 21st. Guarantee your spot now, talladegasuperspeedway.com or 877-GO-TO-DEGA. The World Wide Web is a large place. Find all your favorite people and content in the same spot. NextRoundLive.com is full of wonderful tidbits about the show you know and love. Find our gear, listen to your favorite personalities, follow our socials, and enjoy your trip to NextRoundLive.com. Jim Dunaway, Lance Taylor, Ryan Brown, and Rockstar. Live from the Birmingham Racecourse Casino Studios, the next round, presented by Bud Light, is on now. All right, Dan Wetzel in just a second. The show being brought to you by our friends at NASCAR. We're getting ready for a big race weekend going on at NASCAR. Uh, so many things that you can do uh, over there with that wonderful NASCAR experience. The Geico 500 is coming up April 20th and 21st. The website to get all the details as a race fan is talladegasuperspeedway.com, talladegasuperspeedway.com, 877-GO-TO-DEGA, 877-GO-TO-DEGA. Race tickets for the Infinity Series, ARCA on Saturday, the NASCAR Cup Series on Sunday. It's the high banks of Talladega. It is the world's fastest speedway. It's a great fan experience. It's wonderful just to go people watching there. A lot of great fun out there, including a Walker Hayes concert with your ticket on Saturday night. I encourage you to go buy tickets. And if you've never done it as an Alabamian, if you've never done it, you got to experience it one time. TalladegaSuperspeedway.com, TalladegaSuperspeedway.com, or 877-GO-TO-DEGA. All right, let's go to the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline. Our man Dan Wetzel, national columnist, Yahoo Sports, covered college basketball for a very long time before moving more into the national columnist role. So he has seen many an NCAA tournament game. He is with us now. Good morning, Dan. How are you today? I'm doing great. How are you? Doing fantastic. You know, it's weird about this NCAA tournament. Dunaway has mentioned several times because he picked opposite of this that for only the fifth time, all the ones and twos have advanced, but it still just has that feeling like it has been such an unpredictable tournament when it when it really has not. I mean, the one and twos have advanced, but it... I, I guess that's the great thing about this tournament. Even when that happens, you still feel like you've seen some unpredictability. Yeah, I always say this this event is like two events in one, and that's why I think it captures the country's attention. So it's such a magical thing. You get those first two days. You get your Oakland University. You get your Yale. You get your St. Peter's or Abilene Christian or whatever it is through the years these legendary upsets and these buzzer beaters and all the excitement of that. And everyone gets into those storylines, right? Who doesn't like Oakland other than Kentucky fans, but right. <laughs> Great story, right? <laughs> Jack Gelke division two transfer. He's just draining. He's got a green light. 23 he took 23s in a game. Like Steph Curry's like, could I get a green light like that? <laughs> <laughs> he hits 10 of them. Like that's, that's the magic of March. Right. But then as it sorts out in the middle, by the end, generally speaking, your final four is your Carolina and Kentucky and Duke and Kansas. And maybe there's one in there, Villanova, UConn. The heavyweights get it done in the end, right? And you have, all right, let's see who's going to win this. So, you know, look, if you watch this season, if you're a fan this season, you're like, hey, I kind of want to see what has been in Purdue and UConn. And maybe, maybe there's another team, maybe an Alabama that's really good or somebody else jumps in there. Great. This is going to be exciting, but 
you kind of want both, right? You kind of want both. And you, historically, we've gotten that. Now, the field has flattened through the years, and particularly last year. And we've seen more, like last year, we had FAU and San Diego State play each other in, in, the, uh, in the Final Four. So um, it's gotten more, you know, it's gotten more common for teams to kind of get there. I wouldn't call San Diego State an upstart anymore or anything, but you see it. So this is a little bit, you know, this obviously, hey, look, the committee took a lot of heat, and for some of the decisions, they deserved it. They certainly seeded these top teams really well because they've all proven themselves to, to get there. So um, I thought the weekend was great. I thought it had the the amount of excellent games and the fun storylines. And then, like you said, you kind of look at it this thing, thir- you look at it this Thursday, Friday matchups and going, oh, Houston Duke? Oh, yeah. Like, I, I'm not a fan of either team, but that's going to be a game. And, you know, uh, Creighton, Tennessee or whatever, mm-hmm. Purdue, you know, like this, this is going to be really good going forward. So it's kind of an exciting tournament. Yeah, it, it really is. And, uh, you know, I hate to take away from what we're seeing on the court, but you're such a national guy. I want to ask you about two comments. One of them uh, was Greg Sankey before the tournament started talking about maybe if you if you look at, at, at who gets the bids and something, maybe we need to start looking at more power conference bids. Uh, it was taken almost the, the SEC commissioner was almost talking about phasing out some of the, the smaller schools in this tournament. Meanwhile, Coach K, retired Coach K, says uh, we shouldn't touch anything. If we don't have a five-year plan for college athletics, you know, you don't start a trip without knowing where your destination is. And with this tournament, it's never been better. Don't touch anything with the NCAA tournament. Two differing views may be right there. One, at least something that Sankey wants to explore. And Coach K is saying don't change anything. How do you see the changing landscape impacting this thing that we love so much? I'm, I'm 100% Team K. I really am. Um, obviously, you know, really interested in what Sankey said. He's a very, obviously, you guys know, very, very smart guy. Yes. Um, and very. he's not just careful with his words. He's strategic with his words. So it was interesting when he said those and then, you know, somewhat doubled back on it. There's, there's, and it's not just him. It's all, all of the main commissioners. They want to, exp- let's go to 72. And, it's, it, it, and, and what I hate about this is it just feels like in college sports right now, everybody's just out for these small incremental gains in either their own self-interest, their own little power or their own more money or more of this like small stuff. And no one is really looking at the overall health of this thing and going, look, I don't know how you didn't, if you watched college basketball this weekend and all these guys certainly did, you don't sit there and go, gosh, I am so lucky to be one of the stewards of this unbelievable event, this purely American event. It is, you know, so exciting and everybody likes it and it delivers every single year the, the, on this magic, how do I help preserve it? Not how do I get a little bit more? And that's what bothers me. Coach K is a hundred percent right in. You don't know how many conferences we're even going to have in a couple years. You don't even know what conferences are going to exist. We we have no idea what's going to happen in five. Years. Five years ago, I was on this show and said there'll be no Pac-12. <laughs> yeah. Washington and Oregon will be in the big. Big uh, the the Big Ten, Texas and Oklahoma. I mean, the SEC. Come on, man! Like that was that was a, this is radical stuff, right? We don't know, and let alone like you can get NIL. You know, uh, Jack Gelke from Oakland will have a, a BW threes ad. You know, four hours after the game, right? Like you'd be like, no way. So all this, stuff, we don't know where we're at, and I just I just wish, and I know this is naive. It ain't, no one's listening to me. Nobody cares about this. But I wish the leadership of the of college sports just sat back, took a breath, and said, "Hey, it's this is great. Let's not ruin this. Let's look for the overall health. Let's not say, hey, we get seventy six in. Uh, you know what? We can have uh, Oakland have to play another mid major, and then we kind of knock one of those guys out. Maybe we'll get one more. T- you know, St. John's will get it. St. John's went two and eight. There was a stretch of the season they went two and eight. That's why they're not in. It needs to be inclusive and then exclusive. It needs to let all these teams in because you don't know where the magic's coming from. 
and then it has to be a little bit hard to make, and that's okay. Dan Wetzel is with us at Dan Wetzel on Twitter, national columnist, Yahoo Sports. He's on the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline. Also a uh, bestseller, uh, New York Times bestselling author. He's uh, got great books for the young reader in your life, uh, some of the great athletes that they have followed, and uh, can read more about them. You can get a link to that uh, on Dan's Twitter page. You go buy those for your uh, young readers in your life. I, I I don't know how to ask this question, but so Nate Oates is he's coached in four tournaments. So they've only had four tournaments his first year. He, he, he the COVID tournament that got canceled. So he didn't get a chance to get into that one. He was he was going to be borderline going into the SEC tournament. But after that, he's he's made the tournament every year. And now three of the four, he's made the Sweet 16. Alabama has not advanced past that under Oates. And that is his next challenge, obviously. But yeah, for a guy that spent so much time, Dan, covering college basketball, can you quantify for me how difficult it is, even though it's not the Final Four of the Elite Eight, to make three out of four Sweet 16s? That is not an easy accomplishment. No, not at all. No, not at all. Has it been done at, at Alabama before? Uh, Wimp. I guess uh, Wimp probably had a stretch Wimp, where he went three yeah, four, because he had six total. Three yeah. out of four. Yeah. Three yeah. out of four was Wimp did it in the 80s, and I think that's the last time. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, look, you take over – uh, Duke, it's a little easier, right? Yeah. Um, but Alabama, it's not. He is exceptional. I love how that team plays. I mean, they're just fun to watch. And last night's game, I mean, that was the strangest game. Uh, I, I, I love Barkley and those guys after to talk about how bizarro the game was. But they held their poise. And Mark Sears is so good. Um, I think Jamal Shedd of Houston is my favorite player, but, but Mark Sears is my second favorite in this tournament. Uh, he was so good. They play such a fun style. He's made Alabama basketball matter. He's made Alabama basketball uh, a national brand. Um, he's done an exceptional job. We will see what happens. I think that, you know, the problem with the tournament is it's so um, – you know, you just have no idea what's going to happen. And so you kind of have to just slowly build credibility over the years. I think in, I think Krzyzewski won five. He also lost three times to, like – you know, got upset three times, right? So anything can really happen, but the great coaches just sort of get you there, and then, hey, we got a shot. We'll see what happens. Um, You look at Mark Few, nine straight years at Gonzaga made the Sweet 16, right? That's a real sign of a great coach and a great program is when you're knocking these off year after year and and doing it with great seasons. So um, obviously these coaches always want to win. There's always pressure and expectations. I know – um, oh, just signed obviously a huge contract extension and all that. Um, but for the most part, it's a crap shot when you get in there. And as long as it's not just terrible coaching blunders, you really don't know what you can, what you're going to get day in, day out. So I think he's done a, I mean, obviously a, a phenomenal job. Uh, and is just a huge asset for Alabama. Um, I, I have a, a, a Mark Few uh, Gonzaga point, but I just want to point out Jamal Shedd. You mentioned him. Uh, I don't think it should be legal that your Euro jump step, you should be able to dunk on that. He had one last night, that Euro jump, I think it was in overtime, where up he did it. Up and down, right? Oh, because my gosh. Yeah. What, what is the yeah, difference between, was, yeah. what's the difference between up and down and that big jump Euro step? <laughs> yeah. I mean, he could have dunked it if it had been closer to the <laughs> I know, rim. I know, it was crazy. <laughs> I love for yeah. that vertical. But back to, back to Mark Few and Gonzaga, I've cheered against that team so many times as a one seed. But now they have fallen down to where they're like a Cinderella to me again. I used yeah, to cheer back. for them, and I sort of like this team again. They're they're sort of overachieving, so I'm all zags this year. Yeah, they're, they're back. Well, look, I mean, some years you have lottery picks, some years you have the best team, and some you know you got the, some great player. Some years you don't. Um, how do you how do you make it work? And that's uh, what they've done up there is, I mean, ridiculous. I mean, it's a it's a it's a private Jesuit school in Spokane, Washington. Um, that before they got this run, 25 straight NCAA basketball tournaments, nine straight years in, in the Sweet 16, they've made Final Fours. I mean, they haven't won it, but I don't know how you do better than that at, at Gonzaga. And like you, like you said, yeah, they're, they're they're kind of the underdog again. You know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. This is going to be a heavy, this is going to be some great games. And no easy path for anybody. Like no one's just sitting there staring at, um, you know. No, oh, this 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 team should automatically make it. I mean, I I think you look at the, the final sixteen and go. Uh, I think I saw a list of like the ranking the top sixteen, and I'm like, man, I uh, pretty much any of these guys could could get there. 
Yeah, I was going to ask you, is there a one seed you believe most in right now? Purdue has been dominant. UConn has been really good. Houston is probably quite fortunate to still be alive after last night. Yeah, sometimes you need that game. There's a lot of national champions that almost lost the game. And then they get going, you know? I mean, obviously, I mean, what, UConn and Purdue couldn't have played any better. UConn cannot be playing any better. Uh, Big East tournament and then this. They just destroy it. I mean, they just... So we may just be, we may look back on this and go, oh, everyone was just out of play for a second. Um, but I don't know, you know. But so it's hard not to say UConn looks like the best team because they've looked like the best team for a while, and they won the thing last year. And Danny Hurley's a, a great coach and all of that. Um, but um, I like, I like uh, Purdue. Obviously, is doing well, and they're they're funny because you know they've had such you know they lose the two seed, then they lose the one seed. There's all this pressure on them. Like their fans were celebrating as a one beating a 16 more than I've ever seen a one celebrate beating a 16. Like their fans are just like, thank God. Right? There's almost a, they're, they're kind of a lovable rooting team too because you sort of feel bad. Like Zach Eady and these guys and Matt Painter seems like just good. He is a really good guy. And like, you know, you don't want to be humiliated. I mean, Zach Eady's a great player and kids have given so much to college basketball, but it was, it was funny watching them all. Them, uh, they weren't as wild as the Grand Canyon crowd. My uh, God, I don't know what the heck that was, but my God, uh, it was fun to see Purdue celebrate beating a 16. Yeah, we we have a friend uh, Vern Funquist on social media, uh, and he uh, he said before the game Grand, Grand Canyon, uh, imagine BYU with fake IDs. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I'm watching that crowd, it, it, I was like, okay, I get it. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I can see that. I, I, I can see that. Um, I, yeah, I don't know what that means, but I think I do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, uh, John Calipari, uh, do you? Yeah. I, I mean, it's SEC money, SEC football money. Do you pay thirty three million dollars to make a to make a change? The folks on game day were very, very much defending Cal that he should not be let go. Yeah, I mean, they could. He's, it's justified to let him go. Um, I, I mean, I'm, it's Kentucky. Can't keep losing this way. And and what? Like, how is it changing? I mean, that would really be it. Like, is it? What's the plan? Like, what's the plan here? Um, look, at, at the same time, did he think this kid would hit ten threes on him? No, but that's that's March, and so there's a reason you make all that money, and you know. I, I think what it says to me is why, why did why would anyone get a lifetime contract? Why would you ever give somebody yeah. I, I, these contracts and these buyouts are so in, so incredible? So now you're on the hook of thirty three million, and they gave him that because they were worried he'd leave. Right? Maybe it was a Texas job. I can't quite remember. You I thought it was, it was it an NBA job? Maybe, maybe it was maybe? the Brooklyn Nets or something. Yeah, like I, that. I can't remember. Nets. Yeah, you're Kentucky. Let them go. You get another guy. Yeah, yeah. Like they box them the same thing at A and M. They box themselves in on this stuff and A uh, and M football. But a lot of these schools, they they oh we got to give them this call. can't let them leave. And it's like where is he? Where are they really going? You know, I remember they did that with Ed Ogeron at, at LSU, and it's like where Ed, like where is he going? That's <laughs> yeah. the perfect job for. Yeah. Him. Yeah. I mean, you sort of you sort of understood it for Bobby Bowden back in the day at Florida State. Uh, I don't know why they did it, but uh, I guess it was out of a to honor him. But they ended up regretting yeah. that. Joe Paterno. I mean, it happens. Uh, Andy okay. makes a point. It was UCLA, maybe that okay. Calipari was going to lead yeah. for. Um, well, but, you know what? If he really wants to try that, like he probably wasn't going anywhere. I, I just think the ads get and, and, and there's it, it's it, the whole culture is like you just lock the guy down. You'll get a Coach K. He'll he'll do great to the end and like those stories are pretty rare you know those stories are pretty rare so Kentucky's put themselves in a difficult spot I it I'm I don't have 33 million uh to, to pay a coach but it's like what do you do with the program the fans are frustrated I think John Calipari's frustrated um you know nobody's happy and at the same time he, it's not like he's this total failure I mean he's probably got a top two you know I know he's got uh, this kid Boogie Flan coming in from from New York City from Stepanak High School is really good and another good class and some of these kids might stick around maybe and like following him won't be that easy either. Um, you might maybe you do better in March, but you don't have the excitement of that just parade of talent that you're watching play uh, at Kentucky and it's not like I, I don't know that being a blue blood is as important as it used to be. 
Yeah, it's a different I world now shoe, for sure, yeah. Yeah, the shoe company influence isn't the same. Yep. I think that's a big deal. Uh, NIL and the portal, and shoe, it used to be shoe company links were big, and Blue Blood was big. Now, I mean, look at these teams that we, we talked about, right? Uh, obviously, Carolina's a one seed. Duke is in this, but Kansas is out. Kentucky's out. Uh, Louisville may get Michigan State's out. Like some of these, you know, it's not Houston, Purdue, and UConn. Obviously, UConn's won a lot of titles, but they're not winning it because their history, right? They're winning it because of their location or whatever. And and uh, and you know, the, the the Alabamas and the Tennessees out of the SEC, and they, you know, and. Um, just all, I don't know, you, you got all the teams in there, but it's not, you know, Marquette and uh, Creighton. And these schools are just, if you get a good coach and you get a program going, you can win a ton of games. You don't need to be a blue blood. So it's like, I think maybe 20 years ago, you snap your fingers, you get a great guy, Kentucky's going to make some Final Fours and maybe win a title. I mean, they've won a title almost with every coach they've had, almost. But I don't know that that's just the case where you can do that with any of these schools anymore. All right, he is uh, Dan Wetzel. You can uh, go follow him at Dan Wetzel and read his stuff there at Yahoo Sports. And as I mentioned, if you've got a young reader in your life, great books about some of their heroes in the sports world that you uh, can find the links right there on Dan's uh, bio, uh, at Dan Wetzel on Twitter. It is always a pleasure to speak with you, Dan. We greatly appreciate the time. Thanks, guys. Talk to you soon. All right, buddy. Take care. Dan with us on the Johnston RVCenter.com hotline. Uh, the show being brought to you in part by our friends at Legacy. We're about to talk a little bit more in this segment about Calipari, and then EG is going to slide in here, I believe, to help us with four downs in the next segment. But Legacy Credit Union want to help you make a switch. You'll switch over from your existing car, truck, loan, location, whatever financial department, banking, uh, establishment that you got your car loan with, your truck loan or your boat loan or any of those kind of loans, you can swap them over to Legacy right now and get an auto loan as low as 5.50% APR. It's called the Swap and Drop Program. You go to the website, swapanddrop.com, swapanddrop.com. Shoot that QR code if you're watching us on any of our video platforms or just go to the website, swapanddrop.com, or as we used to say back in the 90s, www.swapanddrop.com. <laughs> HTTP <laughs> backslash col- colon www.swapanddrop.com uh, when it first became the internet swapanddrop.com engage checking everything uh, proud supporters of UAB athletics all right I, I just want to make a point Brandon okay. Marcello helping us out with some information here but do you oh I, in fact I've got sound I think I think the great Scott Forster prepared this sound let me see now, this is Calipari related. Yeah, okay, you, uh, take that down for a second. Uh, uh, I won't look at it. Yeah, don't look. I don't didn't look. look at it. I don't even know what. Uh, everybody Marcello erase said. that. First of all, give me cut 12. Okay. Because I want to set this up uh, because it's in this tweet and then Marcelo has a fascinating number. Um, but John Calipari, let me see if I have the date that this was said. I think this was in 2020. Oh, I remember us playing this. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah from this his is house. From Kentucky Sports Radio. Yep. Uh, may have been right after the pandemic. Uh, John Calipari, remember when he and Mark Stoops had that pre-football yep. season bout going on? Here's what John Calipari said. You got to be intentional. You got to say we're doing this, and the reason is this is a basketball school. It's always been there. Alabama is a football school. So is Georgia. I mean, they are. Right. This is a bat. No dis. Our football team. I hope they win games in 10 games and go to bowls. At the end of the day, that makes my job easier, and it makes the job of all of us easier. But this is a basketball school. This is a basketball school. Now the Brandon Marcello tweet, doing a little research. Um, Kyle Tucker says, this is a basketball school. It's August 11th, 2022. Since that comment, <laughs> Since that comment, John Calipari is one and four in the postseason, and he's won zero SEC tournament games. This is a basketball school, and since then, as Marcelo points out, one and four in the NCAA tournament, two of those losses to a 14 and a 15, and 
zero wins in Nashville. Yeah, I, I see the end of Kyle's tweet, and I remember this was Calipari campaigning for a uh, basketball facility. Everybody was focused on Stoops, and he's like, I love what Stoops has done, but we're a basketball school. We, I need my basketball facility. That's what he was after. I remember that. By the way, they and, have a beautiful basketball facility. Oh, I'm sure they do. It's called Memorial Coliseum. They used to play basketball games in it. Right. They built out the offices yeah. and everything for basketball to where it overlooks the court and training facilities. Right. And that was when I was there. Yeah. No telling what it looks like now. Uh, yeah. And Brandon is saying you reap what you sow sometimes, and uh, or all the time, but he's he's reaping what he sowed there. And, I, I mean, again, we could, we could sit here for the next uh, – th- there's 35 minutes left of this hour. We could probably do 35 minutes on what all is wrong with Kentucky basketball under Cal yeah. right now. Um, I, 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 as I pointed out last week after they got bounced uh, Thursday night, you've allowed Alabama, Auburn, and Tennessee to take over this conference, and there's really no debate. Yeah. They won all the conference championships in that time, the tournament and the regular season championships. I think they won. I think Alabama, Auburn, and Tennessee have won all those since 2019. Um, you know, Auburn has been to a Final Four since Kentucky has been. Alabama is advancing in the tournament consistently now. Kentucky is not. Tennessee is advancing in the tournament consistently now. Kentucky is not. Yep. And they've all won some kind of championship That's in right. the SEC, yep. and Kentucky is not. Yep. I mean, uh, it's, There it's, is a lot more good going on in Knoxville, Tuscaloosa, and Auburn in basketball than there is in Lexington, So, so you've allowed them to take over your own conference. You're, right. You don't even own your own That's conference. Right. It's not like Kansas. That's right. Where at least you still own the Big 12, even after you got bounced. You, you, you don't even own your conference anymore. Yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, crazy times up in Lexington. Will they spend the $33 million to make a change? I somehow feel like they will. I, I think you've got to be able to find some compromise here. So here's what, if I'm a Kentucky fan, here's what I hope, okay? And if I'm Mitch Barnhart, here's what I hope. But I don't know how Calipari would feel about this. But I would hope, you know, like, look, John, we gave you this golden parachute contract, right? And in it was baked in this job you can have in the athletic department where you make a million a year. I get that you don't want to trade a $33 million buyout for a $1 million a year job. Can we find some middle ground? Would you help us? So that you could still have this job. You could be the coach emeritus. We can walk you out to present an award and the fans are still going to clap for you. Time will pass. They'll forget all the bad stuff and they'll remember all the players you've put in the NBA. They'll remember the national championship. They'll remember all the games we've won and they'll clap for you when you come out. We can't pay you $33 million right now and keep this program at the top of basketball. Is there any way you would work with us on this? We'll pay you the whole 33 Everybody keeps saying Billy Donovan will take that job. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know how he's don't how, know. how he's driven by what he's doing. I mean, he's he was a Patino guy. I know. And as I've said before, I don't know if it was on this show or uh, one of our especially shows, but how awkward would it be for him at Kentucky, basically a bitter rival of Florida basketball, to go once a year to play a game on Billy Donovan Court in yeah. Gainesville? That'd be a super awkward, wouldn't yeah, it? Super awkward. All right. When we come back, we'll do four downs and we'll keep a. Rolling on, talking about March Madness. Some football news out there we'll get to later on. Uh, And we'll circle back to the Bama locker room coming up to start the final hour. Ryland Griffin with the ultimate comment to Taylor uh, in the locker room last night. Uh, that is all still to Kentucky can't afford $33 million? Yeah, they can, Dave. Oh, you've got a question mark. Yeah, they can afford $33 Well, they million. can. Yeah. It's just, do I want to spend that yeah. on basketball? Uh, it's basketball school, but they can afford $33 million. They can do it with horse money, or they can do it with what we like to call football money. <laughs> at the basketball school <laughs> if they choose to do it that way um the show being brought to you by our great friends at woodhouse day spa i've yet to go by for a massage at woodhouse well, what's that your is, problem that is, that is on my to-do list before the summer is done before football cranks back up i'm going to go spend an entire day at woodhouse day spa i know a lot of folks up here use the time to go up there and occasionally do it brownie tell us about woodhouse and why it could be perfect for you to get a get rid of a little stress in life. Uh, Woodhouse Spas, uh, you could just go birmingham.woodhousespas.com and you can find everything you need about them. If you're stressed over your bracket, who's not? Now you could book right there online. They're open until uh, 8 o'clock every single uh, day, Monday through Saturday, until 6 o'clock on Sunday. Or you can buy a gift card. Make it easy. Gift giving season, you know, whether it's an anniversary or a birthday or something like that, you can purchase a gift card right there at woodhousespas.com. Birmingham.woodhousespas.com. Get a gift card, book an appointment, and go relieve the stress there at Woodhouse Spas in the Summit. Call the next round now at 205-734-0923.
The wait is over. Tonali has arrived. Beautifully distinctive Italian styling and performance. Come test drive the all-new 2024 Alfa Romeo Tonali plug-in hybrid at Alfa Romeo of Birmingham. The all-new Tonali offers best-in-class horsepower and torque. Fastest 0-60 to 60 times in its class. Plus best-in-class range with full electric charge. And best of all, qualified Tonali leasees are eligible for up to $7,500 EV tax credit factored into your lease. Hurry down to Alfa Romeo of Birmingham and experience the all-new Tonali. Tournament time is almost here, but any time is a great time to jump on with MyBookie.ag. When you sign up at MyBookie.ag, use code next round for a special sign-on bonus. You can use that bonus right away. Win once with it. It is yours and yours forever. Not like some of the sites that make you win 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 times before you keep the bonus. You win once at MyBookie.ag. It is yours forever. Basketball tournaments, NBA, the start of Major League Baseball, NASCAR, and golf. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere. MyBookie.ag. Code next round. If renting is putting a dent in your bank account, here's your sign from the universe that it's time to buy a new home. And who better to help you through the ins and outs of home buying than our friends at Mortgage Right? With Mortgage Right, you don't have to worry about becoming a short notice mortgage expert because they do all the heavy lifting for you. They're trusted mortgage professionals and they'll help you choose the right mortgage option and stand by your side every step of the way. Visit mortgageright.com slash TNR to buy before renting runs you dry. That's mortgageright.com slash TNR. NMLS 2239 Equal Housing Lender. Stop by the New York Butcher Shop and pick up the finest in certified Angus Prime Beef steaks and burgers, premium pork chops, ribs, and all-natural chicken cut to order just for you. Their chef-prepared entrees and side dishes are the perfect dinner-to-go choice for your family and are ready to heat at home. With a great selection of fine wines and desserts, the New York Butcher Shop is your one-stop dinner shop. Two locations to serve you, Cahaba Heights and on Highway 119 in Greystone, the New York Butcher Shop. Rare quality, well-done service. Get ready to level up your fandom with the Autograph app. Co-founded by the legendary Tom Brady himself, this app is your one-stop shop for everything college sports. Access to all the best sports content, exciting fan challenges, and exclusive rewards. Think crazy discounts on tickets, limited edition merch, and much more. Just look at this. Autograph hooked up six lucky fans with tickets to the Arkansas-Alabama game for just $16 a ticket. That's what they call true fan pricing. Ready to join the party? Download the free Autograph app today and use the code TNR for exclusive access. NASCAR is returning to Talladega Super Speedway for the 2024 GEICO 500 weekend, Saturday, April 20th through Sunday, April 21. Guarantee your 2024 GEICO 500 weekend experience today by visiting talladegasuperspeedway.com or calling 877-GO-TO-DEGA. Enhance your race weekend by adding passes to the Talladega Garage Experience presented by Cool Ray. It is the GEICO 500 weekend, Saturday, April 20th and Sunday, April 21st. Guarantee your spot now, talladegasuperspeedway.com or 877-GO-TO-DEGA. Hang out with the next round on the go. Whether you're driving to work, running errands, sitting on the beach, or you just need a break from the real world, we can keep you company. Check out the next round, Mystery Fifth Hour, and our other shows on your favorite podcast app. We'll meet you there. All right, we're back with you on the next round. Emily Grace McWhorter is here. She's been on the pro, pro day route lately. I have been. She's been to Auburn for getaway day, the reverse tiger walk, amazing big video Thank you. of the young kid. Right place, right time. Yeah, well, that's, that's, that's the whole world, baby. That is. That's the whole world, right? Amen. But that was amazing video. Thank you. And then um, the practice video, both Auburn and Alabama has been good, the pro day video. So some of the stuff we get that you don't always get to see, the face and the name behind the video, is this me. is the person who's on campus and is out working to bring it all to you on all our platforms. So we appreciate that so much. Thank you, Dunaway. And, and she's going to help us with our four downs today. She's got that for us. Before we get to that, johnsonrvcenter.com. Are you going to be in town for the Talladega Race Weekend coming up April 20th through the yes, 21st? Yes, I will be. 19, 20, and 21st. We're going to have an RV from Johnson RV out there. And uh, you didn't go with us the other day out to the track. Mm-mm. You were no, you I were down. Auburn. You were down at yep. Auburn. We went out to the track and we had a blast. Uh, and we will show you video at some <laughs> point of Brown trying to. Well, he does. He climbs the high banks. Um, but as Brown learned, I won't give it away. But there's one thing climbing. But you always have to come down. You got to you got to, <laughs> got to see it later on. So it was it's a, far steeper than you would imagine. It was amazing. Top, it was yes. amazing. But uh, we're racing at Talladega we soon. Are. And we'll be out there with our friends at Johnston RV. Yeah, I-65 exit 304 in Coleman. 334 indicator is where you find Johnston RV. Now, what they've done is they've repriced their entire lot, every single RV. And they're so confident in their pricing, 
that they are going to give you a nationwide price match guarantee. You bring them a price, they'll beat it on any comparable RV, and that is a nationwide price guarantee. You can also see more about uh, their lifetime warranty from RV Warranty Forever. Anything new or under two years of age used, you can get a lifetime warranty from RV Warranty Forever. I-65, exit 304 in Coleman, 334 indicator. It's where you get the price match guarantee at Johnston RV Center, johnstonrvcenter.com. Okay, I just give you a thousand compliments, but do not take my really good pen. You the really good pen? Oh, this uh, one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wow. am. The old G2. Oh, the old G2 you can't 10. get those, can't get those yeah, anymore. These are rare. They, yeah. they only sell them everywhere. Though. Yeah, yeah, the old it G2 is a good pen, 10. though. He's right. I'm going to get you like an engraved pilot G2 pen for your birthday. I do not want engraved. I Why? Do not, I don't like know. with Dunaway I, on the side? I like disposable. When they run out of ink, I just like to be able to throw them away. Once it's engraved, i got to keep it forever. Then i got to replace it. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, totally. This is the best pen in the world. Smoothest writing pen in the world. Um, but then I just toss it. Hmm. Like this one's about to be tossed. Yep. Yeah. This one's getting there. Um, not yet, though, so don't, don't walk <laughs> okay. out of here with it. But she does have our four downs brought to you by our friends at Slice. Great locations, four of them, soon to be five. In fact, maybe opening, uh, we've already, LT's already been in there having pizza at the new location in Homewood. We will not go to five downs, but they bring you four downs <laughs> all the time. Four great locations uh, down in Montevallo, Vestavia, also now in Mountain Brook. What's that area over there called? Uh, where Saws is that location? That's uh, is that Crestwood. Crestwood. Crestline. Crestwood. Sure. Yeah, Crestline. Yeah. 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 yeah, and then the original the old Lakeshore location. Our friends at Slice coming to Homewood very soon. We always start with what, Rockstar? First down. All right, let's talk some Sweet 16. Better chance of winning NC State over Marquette or Gonzaga over Purdue? Um. You know, the the problem with Gonzaga Purdue is both of them have played elite mm-hmm. level. They have dominated two opponents, especially Gonzaga just dismantling Kansas. That was such an impressive win. I got to think this is going to run out for NC State at some point. Um, they have won, and it is impressive what they've done. Seven consecutive absolute must-win games to right. A, probably save their coach's job and get him a contract. <laughs> He's got a two-year contract to stitch it out of this. But B, make their way to the Sweet 16. That has got to run out at some point. That is so hard to do at this level. So I would say better chance Gonzaga upsets Purdue than, than uh, NC State upsets Marquette. Seven wins in 12 days. For yeah, NC and they're State. all must wins. It's not yeah. like seven yeah. wins where you could drop one. If they drop one, the season is over. That's right, because they were not going to make the tournament nope. without winning it. So seven wins in 12 calendar days. Mm. That, that's gassed out. Yep. Now you get a little bit of break. I think Marquette is the is weaker than Purdue. Gonzaga is better than NC State. I'm gonna go the other way. I think NC State keeps it rolling, and they upset Marquette. They'll lose the game after that. Interesting. Yep. All right. Second down. Elton John is 77 today. What concert do you still want to attend that you never got to? So would this be like they're finished touring, or um, you could do, or they're still at it, still at it, or retired things like that. Because you know, I've I've checked a couple off my list of late. I always regretted I didn't see Garth Brooks in his heyday, and when he came to Protective, I went, and it was a phenomenal yeah. concert. Couldn't have been any better. Could not have been any better. Uh, I had always regretted that I didn't see George Strait in his heyday, and I was able to go see George Strait last summer for the first time. So, I've seen him before. Yeah. I guess uh, back in his heyday. <laughs> yeah, probably more in his heyday, and I, I don't know yeah. that George Strait's ever left his heyday, Me but either. King George is still at it. Still sounds the same. Yeah. I just saw Zach Bryan, so I checked that box off. Yeah, I will oh, probably... Yeah. I saw the Killers, I checked that box I, off. I'll, I think I'll regret never having seen the Eagles when Glenn Fry was a live rock star. Mine was uh, Rage Against the Machine, and it's sad because oh, they, really? they gave you a tease that they're going to reunite, and Zach like tore a bunch of uh, tendons in his leg, and then they got in a fight again, and we're not getting back together. This is done. But I always wanted the energy they have is so much They're a little older now, but having to see Rage would be such a fantastic experience. Uh, for me, it is um, Bruce Springsteen. My wife does not like Bruce Springsteen. I love Bruce Springsteen. Um don't necessarily like any of his last two or three albums but the point uh the last album right after 9-11 and everything mm-hmm. before that i loved it the rising i think yeah and it was that concert right after 9-11 when he was coming through birmingham last time through birmingham i had tickets uh to go see him like eight or eighth row something like that down on the floor and um ken last i think took the night off on vacation there was nobody else to anchor the news had to give my ticket to my wife and a friend of hers was in town. They both don't, did not like Bruce Springsteen. They took my tickets and went and watched the guy they did not like. 
And uh, <laughs> such a dead away movie. She <laughs> has seen Bruce Springsteen and hates him. It's always Ken Lass. Not <laughs> always. Ken Lass. I know that. Well, <laughs> turn uh, Ken Lass. It was one of those times. Nice it was just guy the world. It was just Ken and I. And when yeah. one was on vacation, the other had to a, a lo- anchor the late local. And it was on a. I think it was a Thursday or Friday night. So Bruce Springsteen, I think he's he's old. I think, Still touring. I think he's yeah. going to go out one more time. I'll probably go see him, but I don't want him to play any of his new stuff. I'd like to request it. I'd like to see Elton oh, John. He's big about that. Yeah, I'd like to oh, see. I'd like I, to. I'd like to see Elton I, I, John. He's but, just a shell of himself. But he's no, got to yeah. promise me he won't play Pinball Wizard. I mean, <laughs> that's the only that's, thing. I hate that song. But, I, I just want Crocodile Rock over and over. Oh, and over. I hate that song too. Oh, okay. You Maybe I don't want to go. Why are you going? If you, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just like his slow songs. Oh. I want to see Taylor Swift. Um, after I shared this story on the meltdown, but. You have not seen Taylor Swift yet? No, I've not seen Taylor Swift yet. Okay, three times. I got scammed um, a couple weeks ago you out did. of tickets. Yeah. I meant to ask you a follow-up. Yeah, so... Um, and you just lost that money. Yeah. You don't yeah, get it back. No, it's James. gone. Wow. Yeah. It's like investing Bitcoin with me. It is. No, I'm. people were like, was it Jim Dunaway that scammed you? It was not. And it could have been Jimmy Crypto at it again. But yeah, I did get scammed out of Taylor Swift tickets. It does not happen to just your 80-year-old grandma. It can happen to a 22-year-old. Third down. Hey, so can, I, can I give some listener reaction, some audience reaction yeah. on this real quick? Um, still worth seeing the Eagles with Vince Gill, Charles said. I've heard Vince Gill is actually very good. He's not Glenn Fry, obviously. Uh, Jeremy says, I'll always regret not seeing Rush with Neil Pert in person. Mm. Rest in mm. peace, Neil. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's just a lot. Yeah. Uh, I don't go to Today's many concerts at all. Royal Pain says Van Halen and George Strait are two big ones I've seen. I think he says I've seen. Krusty Queen would have been fantastic to see. Brandon, Zach Bryan is the most overrated person in music these days. Come at me. Oh, please. Oh. Josh. <laughs> wow. You, you guys, you guys uh, don't like lyrics, I guess. Wow. You don't like lyrics? <laughs> Y'all just aren't smart. Uh, Josh says the Deftones, Rockstar. Oof. I think that's pretty easy to go see. Yeah, I mean, they're, like, they're Paul, probably playing tonight at the casino. Uh, Paul, says, Paul says Chris Stapleton still haven't seen him phenomenal in concert. Chris saw Rage at their prime, said it was amazing, right? Yeah, they, I would not want to be in the pit. I'd want to be away from everybody because there's a yeah. lot of uh, shenanigans going on in that pit. Uh, did, did Stapleton open for George Strait? Yeah, it was uh, wow. It was in the Horseshoe, and, and uh, it was back in May in the Horseshoe in Columbus, Ohio. Little Big Town. Actually, a guy, uh, Warren Ziders. I don't know if you've heard of him. He's upcoming. I'm not a huge fan, but upcoming country music guy. We, we skipped his part. Little Big Town to Chris Stapleton to George Strait. Mm. Yeah, that's a heck of a concert. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. Third down. Okay. Motorboating this- to Tennessee whiskey to 61 number one hits. <laughs> Yeah, you got it. One more time, Rocky. I think it's pontoon boat. <laughs> Third down. There we go. This one's going to spark some discussion. If you could make one change or add a rule to any sport, what would it be? Oh, you mine's get, easy. You get one. Mine's easy. Okay. One change of a rule. Uh, I take away the the touchdown, the oh, touchback, I the fumble mean, through the end zone okay. touchback in football. Easy. Mm-hmm. I don't even think twice about it. Well, I mean, we're, we're getting too many rules now. Yeah. Yeah. So I've taken one away. Like today, the NFL has passed the hip drop tackle rule. That's right. So I don't know how you tackle anymore. You can't horse collar. You can't hip drop tackle. Yep. You can't hit him in the it head. It should be noted the players union was uh, opposed to this, and the owners went through with it anyway, simply to protect quarterbacks. Yeah. Well, and really, no. you get, a lot of it's open field, so you're going to get a lot of receivers, running backs, and quarterbacks. It's skill it's, players. It's DBs yeah. tackling receivers. Yep. It's a cheap way to tackle. But I don't know how you tackle now unless you're big enough to make the tackle. Little guys can't tackle anymore. Nope. Uh, you got to go for the knees. That's well, the only you, thing you can do. It's, yeah, it's another you, bad rule. You remember uh, Zach Higby of the Rams in that playoff game? I mean, he blew up his knee because that's about the only place the DB could hit him and not get penalized. Yeah, I, I would. I would absolutely uh, put a challenge in college basketball. Uh, one challenge flag that the coach can throw. Um, and challenge something in the, only in the last two minutes. Oh, okay. uh, you throw a challenge uh, like the Sanford yeah, call the, the other night. You get to review that or something like that. Yeah. I would do that. I'd throw that in there. All fouls reviewable in the last two minutes of a basketball game. Yeah. That's what Morgan says. Yeah, I, I, I tell you, I, too much. Be, yeah, it needs to be. It needs to be challenged. Uh, we go to the monitor forever. enough already. Yeah, right. It would be yeah. a challenge. It would yeah. be a challenge thing only. Yeah. And for uh, for TV, I would say each team gets 16 more timeouts when two minutes are left. Yeah, we yeah. actually so keep reducing the number of timeouts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get those commercials in there yeah. some way. Fourth yeah. down. What, what, what I, we can't do it now because of copyrights. One of my favorite Rock Star imitations is when he would do the announcer yelling over the CBS music. Because oh, they pull it so <laughs> damn loud. <laughs> yeah. Okay, 
Last one. What is your oddest daily habit? What do you mean honest? Like odd. Yeah. Odd. 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 Oddest. 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 Most odd. Most okay. odd. The odd. thing odd. that you do daily, Dunaway. How long do you, you, you go first? <laughs> How long do you have? You go first. Um, my oddest daily habit. That is a, I don't know if it's odd or not. I'm very much a creature of habit. Um, six days a week, I eat the same exact breakfast. Hmm. Six days a week. Why not seven? Uh, because I don't, I don't get out on Saturday mornings. And my wife, mm. Jennifer, normally cooks breakfast on Saturday. But there's a local place I go through the drive through and get the same exact thing. They know me. Interesting. Uh, all, all I have to do is pull up to the window and they've already got it made. Also, um, I pass him in the hallway every morning with a cup of ice, and he dumps it in the sink. Yeah, well, that's every single well, morning. Where would you suggest I dump that oh, ice? I don't know like why a, that. I don't, but it's like a, it's like a reusable cup. What do you do for that cup when you dump it out? What is the purpose? The, it was sitting right here. Okay. The, cu the cup. I like the cup better than what they have at the convenience okay. store. So I take that cup in and fill it up with my diet coke. So same exact. Same, I know I have the <laughs> same exact routine every morning. Uh, same exact routine every morning. I go out the back of my neighborhood to the neighborhood convenience store. I go see my friend Dora. She runs Dora. the store. Uh, I, I take this cup down here. I don't have it. I got it at that Chris Stapleton concert. It's an Ohio State cup. And I fill it up with Diet Coke. <laughs> it was a big moment in your it life. It really was. <laughs> <laughs> What's it right called? Here. A seminal moment? Yeah, a seminal moment in my life. <laughs> it's a Coca-Cola branded cup. With it. It's got all the Ohio State stuff on it. Got it at the, uh, at the George Strait concert. So I fill that up with Diet Coke. I drive to the local the local place. I place the order on my app. All I do is pull up to the drive through and they they hand it to me. It's the same thing every day. So there's and then we a go to store. You can place it on your app. No, no, no. The I have to go to the store for this. Two, oh, stops. two stops. Oh, it's two stops on your way. So oh, the wow. other place is the the place I know. Yeah, yeah. friend used to work and yeah, that's right. Yeah, I get the same yeah. thing. But we pass there on Sunday on the way to church, so I get it on Sunday too. So six days a week, I eat the same exact breakfast. Wow. Um, when I eat breakfast, I am. Uh, well, when I eat anything, I'm the worst order in the world. But I have to find some combination when I eat breakfast that is both sweet, sweet and salty. That's going to be a lot of cinnamon rolls. Like I took my lovely wife Maggie out on Saturday. Okay. And the place we went had a, a hacienda, some kind of bowl yeah, 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 yeah. that was spicy with eggs yeah. and stuff on it. So that was fine, but I was like, I need something sweet with this. Sweet kicker. Uh, so kiss Maggie. Maggie. And he, kiss I was like, Maggie. do you do you have do you have like a waffle I can get on the side? And the dude was like, No, you'll have to order the whole waffle meal at that point. Okay. Yes. And I was like, Bring it to me. Well, I've gotta have I gotta have some sweet <laughs> with my salty. So I got a whole nother waffle meal that I was gonna split with my lovely wife, but I ended up eating seven eighths of it. Seven eight. Seven eight. It's very so specific. specific. Right. Okay. Yeah, but that is a bad habit of yeah. mine. Odd. It's an odd habit. Gotta have habit. sweet and salty. I feel like mine would be my phone call habits. Like if you look at my call log, it is constant. Like I'm always on the phone with someone. Oh. Like the same. Really? Like, the yes. same three, four people every day, or what? Um, like, I hate like talking many, on the phone. Like how, yeah, how many calls did you did I make place yesterday? Yesterday. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, oh my God. eight, nine, oh my God. ten, oh, eleven, AG. twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Are you serious? I'm dead serious. Fourteen no. calls you made yesterday? I woke up. I called two people yesterday. I, I called. I think I called two people this week. Wait, this weekend. might be people who called me too, but like FaceTime is in there. I woke up and FaceTime my friend Caitlin. Hey, Talk what are you to doing? Her. <laughs> I just woke up. I know. I, I was like, hey, just miss you. you. Just yeah. checking in. Yeah. Uh, called Mikey. My brother called me, Taylor. Oh, this might be Saturday. <laughs> Don't you lie to um, us. <laughs> my mom, my FaceTime, my mom. Taylor called you? <laughs> FaceTime my dad. Did you get that away? Yeah. Taylor my brother come? again. Yeah. Called to talk to my niece, but she's only Josh like says, I don't make 14 calls in a month. Yeah. I don't think I do either. Two I, calls yesterday. Yeah. And one was to talk business with Brown about plans for the week. And the other one was just to call you because you made a nice text to me during the show. Oh, and I was yeah. like, I should call EG just yeah. to, just I to just say thank you. I just love a debrief. I yeah. love debriefing. Yeah. Like calling, hey, what's going on. Yeah. Well, thank you for jumping in with us. Four You're Downs brought to you by our friends at Slice. We, no, told, you, we told you about Slice. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Now we've got to move on. But before you go, I'll present you with the best tasting Coke out there right now. Or at least the new one. Coca-Cola Spice. Coca-Cola Spice. Try it right now. It's spiced flavors. With a hint of raspberry. Love that. A uh, very popular. You're spicy and sweet. Oh, it is. Oh my God. It's perfect. Segway. 
uh, very popular right now with the young 20 somethings. So, hey, parting, by the way. parting gifts for you right here. You can <laughs> have this you. one. You want to trade so it for a cold honored. one? Over there, you can. Uh, our friends with Coca Cola, Coca Cola oh. Spice, give it a try during this March Madness back in a moment. Everything Alabama, all the time. Subscribe and set alerts at Roll Tide Pods on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, for all of your IT and printing needs, reach out to our friends at Xerox Business Solutions. Look, I'm still one of those old school guys. I print my notes every single day for the show. If you watch the show here on the next round, you see all the notes in front of me. From day one, Xerox Business Solutions, they've been with us here at the next round. Local for over 45 years. For all of your IT and printing needs, visit XeroxBusinessSolutions.com or call 205-969-3000. That's 205-969-3000. Fire damage to your home or business is something you never want to consider. Ryan Brown here from the next round. But in the horrible event it happens, Dry Tech is here to help. They respond quickly and will reply to you within 20 minutes when you call 205-637-0143. They're working for you, the customer, not the insurance company. They've got five crews ready to go 24-7. Don't call the insurance company first. Call Dry Tech. Just remember this website, mydrytech.com. That is mydrytech.com. Spring weather is here, and our friends at Hemp Hill Services are offering a $69 HVAC tune-up, plus 10% off any service call when you mention the next round. Call Adam, Chad, and the guys at Hemp Hill Services. Make sure your HVAC unit is ready to keep up with the changing weather. Hemp Hill Services, locally owned and operated independent train dealer. The team can service all makes and models. For all of your plumbing, heating, and cooling needs, call Hemp Hill Services. It's hard to stop a train. 205-229-2090 or HemphillServices.com. That's 205-229-2090. HempHillServices.com. Hey, Lance Taylor from the next round to tell you about my friends at Michelson Laser Vision, located conveniently UAB Highlands. Almost 20 years ago, I went in for the procedure. Only took 12 minutes for both eyes. When I went in, I had 2200 vision. I was legally blind. Now I have 2015 vision, still 19 years later. Make the call today. Schedule a hassle-free consultation. 969-8100. Dr. Mark Michelson, Dr. Jen Michelson, Michelson Laser Vision. Make sure you tell them the next round sent you. 969-8100 or Michael LaserVision.com. You could win a Cadillac CT5 or your share of $25,000 in free play and cash at Birmingham Racecourse Casino. The more you visit, the more chances you have to win. Play the latest, most exciting games around with fun bonuses and big jackpots. You can be a winner too. Come win your share during the Cadillac CT5 and $25,000 giveaway at Birmingham Racecourse Casino. Drawings April 5th and 6th. Located off I-459, exit 31, Derby Parkway. Must be 21 or older, must be present to win. NASCAR is returning to Talladega Super Speedway for the 2024 GEICO 500 weekend, Saturday, April 20th through Sunday, April 21. Guarantee your 2024 GEICO 500 weekend experience today by visiting talladegasuperspeedway.com or calling 877-GO-TO-DEGA. Enhance your race weekend by adding passes to the Talladega Garage Experience presented by Cool Ray. It is the GEICO 500 weekend, Saturday, April 20th and Sunday, April 21st. Guarantee your spot now, talladegasuperspeedway.com or 877-GO-TO-DEGA. Back with you on the next round. New York Butcher Shop bringing you part of the show. Brown's about to tell you about New York Butcher Shop. But as he does that, uh, yes, the hip drop tackle has been passed by the owners. We will uh, get some more details and see if the players, you know, boycott that or something. One thing that has a lot of you upset, I want your quick thoughts, and then you go to New York Butcher Shop. Mm -hmm. Deion Sanders says over the weekend that his son Shador and do, do everything Travis Hunter will force their way to certain NFL teams when they leave Colorado for the draft in an Eli Manning style of demands. That's what Dion says about Shador and Travis Hunter, that they will force they will force their way onto the NFL situation that they want. Yeah. I mean, it worked for Eli, and the Mannings caught a ton of heat for that. Uh, but it worked for him. I mean, it's a, it's a dangerous game to play. I mean, ultimately, an NFL team, you can't control who drafts you, and you've got to be willing to sit out and not make a paycheck while they are willing to sit there and you not play for them. Yeah, I will remind you that Bo Jackson was so mad at Tampa Bay because I think they ruined, the Buccaneers ruined his 
college baseball eligibility for his last year by doing something that they knew was wrong. If I remember the story correctly, yeah. my Buccaneers had the rights to Bo Jackson because they drafted him. But Bo was so upset that he said, to heck with you guys, I will never play for you. I'm going to play with the Memphis Chicks. And they worked his way up to the Kansas City Royals. And it wasn't until the Buccaneers traded his rights to the Raiders that he went and played NFL football. Never played with the Buccaneers. Few people remember the Buccaneers drafted Bo Jackson. Yeah. And well, they disliked he disliked them so much because they did something. And uh they hurt his eligibility at Auburn. Yeah, but yeah. he but he had a right to do that. But he had to not play in the NFL. He could lean back on baseball. I don't know what Shadur and Travis will do. Um that, that'll be interesting to see. I, I hope it works out for him. That is a that is a big game of chicken right there. New York Butcher Shop um, is the place you need to go when you're ready to take over the grill and this summer just make it an incredible summer on the grill. All the great steaks, the pork chops, the chicken, as I was just talking about right there at New York Butcher Shop. Jim and the guys do an amazing job. I'll tell you one thing I love there, too. I'll go get steaks for steak night, date night, and they've got amazing sides, too. It's just like one stop. I know uh, Jennifer doesn't have to do anything. That's uh, what makes date night so I fun. know. That's what makes it so much fun. Nobody has to do any work except for New York Butcher Shop, but they're happy to do it. Cahaba Heights and Greystone, New York Butcher Shop, rare quality, well done service. That's right. John Elway did it to get to the Broncos yeah. as well. It's been done. He had the chance to go play with the New York Yankees. He had uh -huh. a backup plan. Dave, you guys are right. The Buccaneers flew Bo while he was still at Auburn to Tampa, and that was a violation back then. It cost him his baseball season. It cost him his baseball season at Auburn, yeah. yeah. That was crazy. Absolutely yeah, it, crazy. It, is, it is weird. Uh, our friends at Urology Centers of Alabama, urologycentersalabama.com, keeping you and all your urological needs in, in mind. As we get older, men, prostate health, so important, kidney stones, and so much more, they'll take care of you. Urologycentersalabama.com, UCA, 35 urologists, 16 locations in Alabama, urologycentersalabama.com. A couple other football notes. We're going to get right back to basketball and the great folks with Alabama now in the Sweet 16. You're going to hear Rylan Griffin and some more from the guys in the locker room. But in football terms, uh, Kalen DeBoer having a pretty good week in recruiting. Not only did they get four-star athlete Duke Johnson last week, they backed that up with four-star linebacker Abdul Sanders, who picked Alabama over Ohio State and Tennessee. He's from Mater Day. Yeah, out, the, out the, of the West Coast. Yeah, the historic uh, high school football program that has pumped maybe more players into college football than any other high school. I, I don't I don't know if there's a stat for that somewhere, but they are certainly in the running. It seems like it. And they picked up, now it's only a three-star, but Alabama picked up a three-star linebacker in Luke Metz from Buford, Georgia, who picked Alabama over Ole Miss, LSU, and Michigan. But I want to talk to you about what USC did over this week. Yeah, I, I've seen it described as a Lincoln-Riley heater. Uh, yes, but it's where they're coming from. That is crazy. First off, five-star defensive lineman Justice Terry flips from Georgia to USC. He is from the state of Georgia, and he was a Dale McGee recruit. McGee now at Georgia State, so with him leaving Georgia, he sort of bounces out to USC. That goes along with a defensive lineman, Bus Cordova, who uh, doesn't have a rating right now, uh, but he is going to USC. He's from Austin, Texas. And he picks USC over Texas A&M and Oregon. Four-star safety Hilton Stubbs is from Jacksonville, Florida. He picks USC over Florida, Miami, and Florida State. And then there's uh, the number two edge rusher in the country, Isaiah Gibson from Warner Robins, Georgia, who picks USC over Georgia, Oklahoma, and Oregon. He got some work done in the uh, Peach State, didn't yeah. he? And yeah. all these guys are from Georgia or Jacksonville, Florida, or Austin, Texas, and they picked USC over all those guys this week. That's wild. Uh, yeah, I mean, I had seen – I was so involved in basketball, I had not followed, obviously, any of that recruiting. So I saw – I think it was our, our buddy J.D. Piquel um, up at uh, On3 tweet, Lincoln Riley is on a heater. And I'm like, what did Lincoln do? So I went and saw all of that, and I was like, oh, my gosh. Every one of those guys was Texas or East. 
Yeah. Uh, Austin, Texas, yeah. or East. SEC footprint. Yeah. So that was pretty crazy there. And don't cry for Georgia. They did get the 2026 number one quarterback in Jared Curtis, who picks Georgia over Ohio State, Texas, and Alabama over the weekend. He's a Nashville kid, yeah. a 6'4 Playing quarterback. IG, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's all really good right there. That's your football news. We get back to basketball. Bama's in the Sweet 16. If you're a Bama fan, you're feeling really good. We'll get back into that in the final hour, and EG will be back with us with trash. Uh, we're the next round being brought to you in part today by our friends at Hemphill Services. They continue to bring you best and worst of the weekend. Brownie, tell us about Hemp Hill Services. Jimmy D, Hemp Hill is the place to go. I've got a good friend that has had to use them all too often, unfortunately, but he chose them because of this show, and he says, I am thrilled I did. Plumbing, heating, cooling issues. It is home. It is business. They're going to follow you somewhere, man. You're going to have to deal with the plumbing, heating, or cooling at some time. Hemp Hill is who you choose. 229-2090. 229-2090 for Hemp Hill Services. Everything Next Round is on demand now in the podcast section at nextroundlive.com. Hey, there's nothing worse than waking up to a plumbing problem. Don't get caught in a flooded house. Call the guys at Hemp Hill Services. Adam, Chad, and the team at Hemp Hill are the only ones I trust to fix it and fix it right the first time. Hemp Hill Services does it right and always at a fair price. For all of your plumbing, cooling, and heating needs, Trust the name that Birmingham has trusted since 1954. That is Hemp Hill Services. Call now, 205-229-2090. That's 205-229-2090. Hey, Lance Taylor from the next round to tell you about one of our favorite places for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That is Hamburger Heaven since 1982. Hamburger Heaven has been serving Birmingham's best hamburgers, cheeseburgers, french fries, hand-spun milkshakes, and sandwiches made fresh to order. All of their ingredients are fresh and prepared daily. This includes their beef, always fresh, never frozen, hand patted each and every day. For breakfast, lunch, or dinner, visit any of the four locations, Highway 280, Irondale, Gardendale, and Homewood. Hey, Lance Taylor from the next round to tell you about our friends at Gutter Cap. Gutter Cap's that patented aluminum cover system that fits over most existing gutters to keep out debris and eliminate that gutter cleaning. It's back with a lifetime warranty, almost 20 year service record right here in Birmingham. Stay off that dangerous ladder forever. 45% off the retail price now if you call guttercapbirmingham.com. Call my good friend Chris Stewart now, 205 823 2212. Cap it, don't snap it, it's Gutter Cap. Just because you've quit going to the gym, it doesn't mean that you have to quit gym altogether. Dunaway, that is. With our next round podcasts open 24-7, 365, you can access gym anytime you'd like. While you may have done away with your treadmill routine, our version of Dunaway is standing by ready to get you back to your absolute best. Find all that lovely Jimmy D-led content on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and in the podcast section of nextroundlive.com. This message is sponsored by Jimmy Crypto Inc. and Jimmy Crypto for President. NASCAR is returning to Talladega Super Speedway for the 2024 GEICO 500 weekend, Saturday, April 20th through Sunday, April 21. Guarantee your 2024 GEICO 500 weekend experience today by visiting talladegasuperspeedway.com or calling 877-GO-TO-DEGA. Enhance your race weekend by adding passes to the Talladega Garage Experience presented by Cool Ray. It is the GEICO 500 weekend, Saturday, April 20th and Sunday, April 21st. Guarantee your spot now, talladegasuperspeedway.com or 877-GO-TO-DEGA. Stop by the New York Butcher Shop and pick up the finest in certified Angus prime beef steaks and burgers, premium pork chops, ribs, and all-natural chicken cut to order just for you. Their chef-prepared entrees and side dishes are the perfect dinner-to-go choice for your family and are ready to heat at home. With a great selection of fine wines and desserts, the New York Butcher Shop is your one-stop dinner shop. Two locations to serve you, Cahaba Heights and on Highway 119 in Greystone, the New York Butcher Shop. Rare quality, well-done service. Jim Dunaway, Lance Taylor, Ryan Brown, and Rockstar. Live from the Birmingham Racecourse Casino Studios, the next round, presented by Bud Light, is on now. Championschicken.com hour right here. Uh, Alabama is in the Sweet 16. Um... And I, I don't know why I feel so surprised that they're in the Sweet 16. But I'll be honest with you, I am. But I have them in my bracket, my disastrous bracket in the Sweet 16. So I thought they would be there anyway. Uh, and they didn't beat name brand schools to get there, Charleston and Grand Canyon. 
Um, but I thought it was going to be Charleston's and Charleston and St. Mary's. But still, I'm a little I Do you think I'm a little surprised that they're there, not because they're there, but because of who's not still playing? Like the fact that Alabama is there and Auburn is not there, is that where I'm really surprised? And it just seems like I'm surprised about Alabama, but really I'm surprised that it's Alabama who's there and Auburn's not there? You're asking me to get in your head here, which yeah. is always challenging. Well, I think I just oozed it all out yeah. for you right no, there. No, I think you're surprised, if I had to guess, you're, you're, at least a large portion of your surprise is because you saw Alabama play in March, and that did not look like a Sweet 16 team. Alabama at Florida did not look like a Sweet 16 team. Alabama having to charge from behind to beat Arkansas at home did not look like a Sweet 16 team. Alabama at Kentucky didn't. Alabama... Um, in the SEC tournament against Florida. None of that looked like a Sweet 16. There was nothing where you watched that and thought, I'll tell you what, if Alabama can get in this tournament in a good spot, they, a favorable draw, they can make a run. I mean, that, nothing told you that. So I think that surprises you a little yeah. bit. Um, and a little bit that Auburn's not still playing. That does Well, that does I mean, that's got to be part yeah. of it, sure. But I think on the Alabama front, I mean, Nate Oates, again, this guy has, has had the ability to coach in four NCAA tournaments at Alabama. And he's now been in the Sweet 16 in three out of the four. I find that really impressive. I pointed it out last night, and of course some opposing fans took a shot that he's never been past the Sweet 16. And he's got to accomplish that at some point. Wimp had six Sweet 16s. And never went further. Never went further. He had three in a row. Dan Wetzel asked us earlier, had that ever been done at Alabama? Three out of four. Wimp went three in a row. So yeah, it's been done before, but that was what, when anytime you bring Wimp up, once you get past the jokes about Wimp and how he takes shots at us and all those things. If you bring up Wimp's career, most people remember the fact he was a successful coach that never made it past the Sweet 16. By the way, Sam Newton, a successful coach at Alabama that never went past the Sweet 16. Different world back then because it's like that game they lost to Indiana when Indiana was undefeated. It was technically a Sweet 16 game, right? It was, yes. But it was Indiana's first game or second game or something. It was Alabama's second, Indiana's first. Yeah, because you had a weird buy situation. 32 team tournament. Yeah, such a weird situation then. But, yeah, I mean, that, <clears throat> that, that is true. I mean, he never did. And Nate Oates is eventually going to have to do that. Alabama is now paying him, depending on, you know, how you look at the contract, whether it's the value of the contract or the annual, top five money. You don't pay a coach top five money just to make the Sweet 16. I mean, the expectation is for Nate Oates and Nate Oates expect. I'm not saying anything Nate doesn't agree to. His, his expectations are to be a, in a Final Four. Can he do that one day? It remains to be seen. Listen. I mean, I know they would, in theory, have to beat North Carolina and Arizona to do it this year. But it's not outside the realm of possibility they go to the Final Four this year. I mean, you've, you've, you've climbed half the hill so far. It's the – now, listen. If, if that happens, my boy Tony Hendricks called this. I forget when it was. I said it on the show after the weekend. He said, this is going to end up – this horrible, well, that's what this horrible gonna defense yeah. is going to end up being the team. All it, the great teams at Alabama, this is the team that's going to that, get that, us to the Final Four. That is the way it often happens is the team that you least expect it is the team that makes the deep run. I mean, take a look at Mark Godfrey's Elite Eight team, the deepest Alabama's ever been in the tournament. You didn't go into the tournament. That, that was a team that was in an 8-9 game. You didn't look at that and think, you know what, that's a good enough team to make the Elite Eight. Yeah. They Jabari, pulled a couple upsets. Jabari and Walker, better team at Auburn. The other team Lost went to, to the Miami final in the four. round of 32. Yeah. The other team went to the Final Four. Wow. Um, so it's often the team you least expect it that somehow figures it out. That's why I say, and look, I did didn't. you bring up Mark Godfrey's Elite Eight team? That's yeah. what, yeah, 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 that's yeah, what yeah. I said yeah. earlier. They yeah. were in the 8-9 game. They had to beat Stanford. They had to upset Stanford just to get to the Sweet 16, much right. less make the Elite Eight. But, it, so, I mean, that just that's the way it happens sometimes. It's the way it happens when a team just catches fire at the right time. Let me tell you what, that, that game against Charleston is the best Alabama. I asked on the postgame show, I did the postgame show, you were at the Zach Bryan concert. I said, this is the best Alabama has looked since when? Tell me. And I had the answer in my mind, and most people said that answer. Last year. <laughs> no, they, they, most people went back to Texas A&M. Alabama won by 25 at home to AM, who as almost we, beat Houston last As time. we now know, is an NCAA tournament team, almost beat Houston. And the, the overwhelming amount of people said that. That was a month ago. That was yeah. February 17th was that game. I looked up the date. So that was the best they had looked in a month against Charleston. Now, they didn't look that good last night. No. But they did on defense. I thought they played their best defense last night. I'm not sure Grand Canyon was running any sort of offense. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know how they helped them on defense. Um uh, Milkman, I, I know we probably need to do a sponsor here, but Milkman has an interesting question on Twitter. I okay, save it after I tell you. Just right. Champy's Chicken. 
uh, Highway 119 in Alabaster, Sterling, the crew down there. He brines his chicken overnight. Then he cooks it to order, so it's piping hot when it comes out. It's fresh. It's juicy to the bone. Hand-cut chicken fingers that are huge. Rockstar just craves them when he comes up here. Every day. Uh, <laughs> They're Miss- good. Oh, yeah. uh, Mississippi Delta recipe tamales. They are terrific. And so much more. Champy's Chicken. Champy'sChicken.com. Highway 119 in Alabaster. What does Milkman say? Well, he says, so what are the expectations for Bruce Pearl? He's only been to one Sweet 16 in 10 years. Yeah, and that carried on to the Final Four. Yeah. And the Final Four. Four, that uh, makes you forget a lot of that things. Makes you forget a lot of things. But for the first time this weekend, I've heard Auburn fans complaining uh, about Bruce Pearl. Not, not like he's got to change things, or but the Auburn fans were upset about the way that went down. And some of that, he's the head coach, as successful as Bruce has been. And listen, you will not find an Auburn fan that won't tell you Bruce Pearl's the best basketball coach Auburn's ever had. They're out of their mind if they don't tell you that, yeah, they're, they're lying to themselves yeah. if they don't say that. Um, so it's not that anybody is upset in that manner, but I think they're disappointed in the way Bruce let this team finish the season. Well, I, w- I would tell you this, having covered Auburn several times, and I even joked with Chad Baker Mazzara about it on one of our si- sound bites uh, in Nashville because he, I asked him, I said, you guys – Talk a little crap. Y'all play play a little mental game with the opponents. And he talked about how that sort of gets some players fired up. And I said, uh, are, we, are we talking about you now? And he's like, he got me. He, he started laughing with whoever yep. was sending me. He got me. He caught me red-handed. Um, they've, they, you know, Chad Baker Mazar pushes the envelope. And then it's, you know, he went too far the other day. He went too far the other day. And it shouldn't have cost his team the game, though. They should have still won that basketball game with the other nine players. They're so much more talented than Yale. Um, but they never adjusted to that. And some of that, some of that's on Bruce. Some yeah. of that's on Bruce. Somebody asked uh, Daniel, says, how many Sweet 16s did he go to at Tennessee? Well, he went to three. And one of those, he, he went on to the Elite Eight at Tennessee. So he was the coach at Tennessee for six years, and half of those were Sweet 16 Elite Eight runs. I mean, yeah. if I'm a Tennessee fan, I accept that. He was in the tournament every single year there. Now, he did have some early exits, a couple of round, you know, one and dones. But he did have the two Sweet 16s in the Elite Eight. He had a Sweet 16 back at Milwaukee when they beat Alabama. So he's done it. It's just he's had a tough time doing it at Auburn. And I think Auburn fans with – here's the thing, and this happens in coaching, with success comes more expectations. This is by far and away the most successful run of basketball I think Auburn has ever had. It's it's a Final Four. So, listen, their last one, two, three – um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven years where there's been a tournament. Keep in mind the COVID year didn't have a tournament. Round of 32, final four. They missed because they were ineligible. Round of 32, round of 32, one and done. That was five out of six. It was six times. Yeah. But since the sweet, uh, the final four, it's been... Ineligible. Well, there's been the cancellation. Cancellation. Which that team was... They were a good team. I can't remember what seed Auburn was projected, but they were 12 and 6 of the conference, 25 and 6. They were probably going to be like a four or five. Yeah, seed. they would be in the tournament. Yeah, they, they were going to be in, but so it got canceled. Um, they were ineligible. Didn't make it. Didn't make it. And then the last three years, round of 32, round of 32, one and done. Okay. That's, so, I mean, you. he's built a program where you expect more than that. Yeah. Trending in a not a good right. direction, hey. really good regular season. And if, if yeah. Bama loses Thursday, Look, Nate Oates, just the Sweet 16 will not be the expectation for Alabama fans next year. But I do feel like with this team, it has exceeded my expectations. I don't know why. I, I feel I, like he has milked, he has milked this tournament, turn, this turnip yeah. in the tournament for about all the uh, the squeeze he could get out of it. I, I mean, we said that, I said that going into last weekend, is that I feel like if they make the Sweet 16, he's about squeezed everything out of this season he could. I don't, I don't want to say that uh, he squeezed 100% out of it, but... He squeezed most everything out of it he could. Um, but that that will not continue. I mean, like, Nate Oates can't just go to Sweet 16s and everybody be like, yeah, we're cool with that. I mean, you're paying him now top five money. Yeah. You pay a guy top five money, you expect some Final Fours. More on that. Rockstar give me cut nine here, cut number nine. Um, our, our friends at the University of Montevallo bringing you this wonderful cut right here, Montevallo.edu, Montevallo.edu. A wonderful institution your son or daughter may be thinking as a junior in high school, a sophomore, or maybe you're a senior, you haven't picked a school yet. Where am I going to go to college? Consider Montevallo, montevallo.edu. Look at that beautiful campus if you're watching on the video platform. By the way, so many of you watching right now, give us a thumbs up and a like right here if you're on the YouTube channel. 
Find where you belong. Maybe it's at Montevallo. At the University of Montevallo, you can apply right now, montevallo.edu. 23 NCAA Division II, fully funded scholarship sports as well. It's all right there at Montevallo, montevallo.edu. Uh, Taylor in the postgame locker room. Taylor Corners on her way back from Spokane right now uh, after being up there for a few days. Seems like a lot longer. Yeah, covering everything in the locker room with Auburn and UAB and and then Alabama after their Sweet 16 win. You see that next round mic flag in any local news video you've been watching, I'm sure. So Taylor asked Rylan, Rylan Griffin about Nate Oates, his coach. And listen to what Rylan says. He the GOAT, in my opinion. So, uh, you know, he hasn't got a natty yet, but trust me, he'll, he'll get a natty um, eventually. Um, you know, he's the GOAT, uh, seriously, in my opinion. Not, nobody's, that's a hot take. Come, uh, everybody's going to think that's a hot take, but in my opinion, he's the GOAT, and um, he's going to continue to show he's the GOAT. Um, there's a lot of great coaches out there, but uh, in my opinion, he's just, he's just unique. Like, he finds a way to win every level he's been at, and um, for that, in my eyes, he's the GOAT. Uh, Rylan Griffin calling him the GOAT. Um, in his opinion, he thinks he'll win a national championship uh, someday. Uh, Alabama fans would take an Elite Eight first and then a Final Four first and a championship game first and then maybe a national championship. But sometimes it all comes in one sometimes. Okay, one, one big swoop there, another good recruiting class coming in. He had to rework the whole coaching staff, yep. which I thought was going to be uh, uh, maybe a bridge too far. Three new guys who all left for head coaching. And then he had to replace the players. I mean, that's what you have to do in college basketball. you got to rebuild the roster every year. But then the Betty Ako exit at the last minute, it was unexpected. Quinterly was sort of, I thought, a coaching decision. But some people say no, that Quinterly decided it. Whatever happened, he's had to manage this team. And now he's back in the Sweet 16. I'm not sure Mark Sears is what he is with Quinterly still there, though. I agree. So that was, that was not, not, no knock on Quinterly, but that was somewhat addition by subtraction is it allowed Sears to become who he is. And I don't think Estrada is what he is if Quinterly is there either. Yeah, and well, you I mean, talk, they won't have the same playing time. You talk about the steady the steady force out there sometimes is Estrada. When it, yeah. when it gets when it gets a little erratic at times, sometimes Estrada is able to calm everybody down, hit a big jumper, get to the rim, make a big pass. Estrada goes so under the radar because Mark Sears is so good – and then occasionally, occasionally Nick Pringle is all over the place and draws a little attention. Estrada is just steady Eddie, man. And he keeps that team, he keeps that team pointed in the right. He's their North Star right now, in my opinion. Yeah, so um, you're, you're right. I mean, the, but that, the, with the Pringle thing, um, or excuse me, not the Pringle thing, but the Bediaco thing, but that is, that is coaching in this day and age. You're just going to have to – every coach is going to have to deal with that at some point. Nate Oates dealt with it this year. Every single coach is going to have to deal with it. I built my roster. I count on this guy being on my roster, and at the last minute he either makes a poor decision to go to the NBA or he decides to enter the transfer portal like Hunter Dickinson did and go play somewhere else. So that's just coaching in 2024. You're going to have to deal with that if you're, you're Nate Oates. It's the coaches that are going to be able to work around that the way Nate Oates has – the way Oates has is the coaches that we're going to work around that that are going to be successful in this game. If you if you if you have trouble dealing with that, it's it's not really your time to be a college basketball coach because that's what everybody's going to have to deal with. Do you? Uh, but you normally do, don't have to deal with that and lose all your assistants at the same time. That was very unique to lose yeah. three assistant coaches to a head coaching job at the same time. Normally, you would lose Brian Hodgson and those other two assistants are like, I'm about to get a promotion. Well, heck, they got head coaching jobs. I forget who asked it earlier, one of our great chat room people. Uh, and we love the chat. You, you see how few phone calls we take on this show because we are able to get great comments like this in the show so quickly and keep the show moving. But somebody asked earlier, just one year, one year snapshot, who did a better job coaching this year, Nick Saban or Nate Oates? And you can't say that Saban did not do a miraculous no, job really with that job. team. And I think Nate Oates, because, I, think, I think it's an interesting debate. I thought it was a great well, question. Uh, Saban or Oates? The, the commonality there is Saban had to replace both coordinators. Oh, he, he's, that's his career. He's replaced yeah. coaches. I mean, Nate may have to start doing this at a, at, a, at a high rate of speed as well. But Nick got to where he was almost replacing the entire coaching staff every year. So replace both coordinators and, uh, and quarterback and still made the college football playoff and won the SEC. Yep. After having a sluggish moment during the season, yeah. and you thought to yourself, "There's a lot well, of commonality." Yeah, this team isn't this team isn't going to be what teams in the past have been. And I think if Alabama fans are being honest, there was a moment you said this year, "This team ain't this team ain't got it." Do, would you say 
the college football playoff is equivalent to making an Elite Eight in basketball? Or would you say it has to be a Final Four? Uh, it seems easier in the playoffs, but maybe, See, I, maybe I would, I agree. I would say state, it's, I live in a state where the playoffs have come a lot yeah. and the Final Four have come so few. I, I guess I'm going to go Saban because he did at least win a conference. He's already ra- he raised a trophy and made whatever the equivalent is, I would say, an Elite Eight. So, you know, Oates has not raised a trophy yet. They did not win the regular season or the tournament. But if he makes the Elite Eight, now we got a discussion. I would still edge Saban, but that is a good question. Yeah, I thought it was a good question as well. Um, can, can I make a point that NC has made right here? And I was going to bring this up earlier. It's a great point. I was about to bring it they're up. They're in the Sweet 16, and they've gotten nothing from Grant Nelson. He's, I think, six points, two rebounds. Is that right? Yep. <laughs> and a lot of fouls. And uh, a lot of fouls. A lot of fouls. And I know down the stretch. I know they, they want him to play that five, and it's probably not his – it's, it's not the position he you thought he was brought in to play, but he's no. gonna. It, it's in that lineup. He's gonna have to play that position. This is only spot in that lineup. Athletic four is what I thought he's uh, three or four. Well, for, I thought really good out shoot or outside shooting. Athletic three and drive or four. to the basket. And yeah. Drive to the basket. You just haven't gotten that out of him. They they need him to play basically an undersized five in that undersized lineup. I mean that's his spot on the floor right now. So he's being asked to play out of position. But boy, you've gotten nothing out of him in, in two games. Yeah, four fouls against Charleston, I believe it was, and then I think he scored six points and had two boards. I mean, he has he's contributed very. In fact, uh, I want to look at his plus and minus. I wonder, you know, in the uh, in the plus minus that uh, that you'll get from Nate Oates. I wonder where he is. Um, I'm gonna. It's gonna take a second. I'm gonna have to pull up the actual well, box score to see that. Then allow me to tell people about. Uh, the metrics of Coca-Cola spiced right now. Is it the best? Uh, Coke Zero may be the best Coke ever. Uh, I also like the Diet Coke. Mm-hmm. Some of you go classic. But listen, give it a try and see if it's for you. It's Coca-Cola spiced. It's spiced flavors, Coca-Cola classic with spice flavors and a hint of raspberry in there. I compared it uh, to EG earlier. She's like, what does it taste like? I haven't had one yet because I just gifted her one. So she's probably sampled it now. And it gives me a little bit, I can't say what we called it as a kid, but it gives me a little bit of the flavor of when we would go at the, at the uh, concession stand and we would get a little of the Coke classic. And then we'd get a little, little, uh, in this case, raspberry, but to get a little grape in there and get a little, uh, another flavor, just a little bit of every flavor. And you know, little I don't, I don't even know what you call it nowadays, but I know what we called it back in the day. I'm not going to call it that anymore, but I was like, uh, that that is a little hint of what I get with the Coca Cola spiced, uh, right there. That's for me personally. Your taste buds are different. Give it a shot. Coca Cola spiced. It is new this year with a hint of raspberry there. And I'm telling you, 18 to 24 year olds are loving it. Uh, so Grant Nelson against uh, against College of Charleston. Of course, I they give me the one that doesn't have the plus minus against Charleston. He was minus five in the plus minus last night. I would have guessed worse. But minus five, but he had the four fouls against Charleston. I don't know why that's not giving me the box score that I need there. But, that's going to give me the plus minus against Charleston. Yeah, but I understand. I understand what you're saying. Lay my believer saying Mo Diabate on Baycott. Diabate is a well, he's a defender. He, he has fouled a lot, but the officials last night were perfect for him. Oh you could, yeah. If you could pack up, listen. If you could pack up those officials and uh, take them to uh, in the Alabama North Carolina game, I think it would actually benefit Alabama. I thought it benefited him last night. Yeah, so you're saying you would take those uh, you would take those officials again? Uh, I would. Now it would be it would be like uh, spinning the roulette wheel and betting on green, <laughs> but uh, sometimes it lands on green. Uh, I, I JT eighty three says Baycott is staring thirty rebounds in the face right now. Well, I tell you what you hope. Here's what you hope. You hope Alabama obviously starts red hot from outside. Griffin Sears. Um, right, so they get to, they get some threes to fall, and it causes North Carolina to creep out on that defense a little bit. Then you can start the cutters in and take some at Baycott and hope to hope to get him in foul trouble. Yeah, two or three in foul trouble, yeah. and then they're a different team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you get Baycott sitting and watching a little bit, and and now you're also hot from three, and now the lane has opened up a little bit for you. That would be your hope there. I just don't know that they've got if you if your expectation is Pringle. Or uh, or Mo Diabate or Mohamed Wagi or any of those guys handle Baycott. Keith says those officials will not be in the next round. They'll be back at the YMCA. <laughs> and Paul t- says Mo D would be better on Ingram or Davis. We'll have time to break down uh, North Carolina and Alabama Thursday night, eight 
45 Central Tip? Something like that, yeah. yeah somewhere like that. Uh, Main CBS, though, I do believe. It is Main CBS. Yeah, and, that. you know, keep in mind, obviously, you're, you got a you got a West Coast arena, so they're going to have a little bit later start, even though you've got basically two East Coast teams. Kind of weird. But yeah. uh, 839 is the official start time. 839 right there uh, out of the West. But they'll have uh, that game and then another one stacked up at or, at, after it, right? At Alabama's yep. going to be the first game. Uh, out there against North Carolina, part of the Sweet 16. And we'll continue like we have for the SEC tournament in the uh, first two rounds. We'll continue all of our coverage on our platforms, video and audio here at the next round, being brought to you by the great folks at Autograph, the Autograph app. We appreciate every one of you who've already downloaded it. It is absolutely free. If you haven't done it yet, do it and help us out. Uh, Autograph is the app. Just put in your email address and the promo code TNR. Your email address, promo code TNR, when you download the Autograph app in your app store today. And uh, just wonderful folks there. They helped us with our coverage in Nashville and in Spokane. Let me correct uh, myself. That is obviously the second game in L.A. So there is a chance if Clemson, Arizona goes long that oh. that may not even tip at 839. So, so it is, is the, the second, second game. game. Yep. So somebody's got a late afternoon game in uh, L.A. Clemson, Arizona play a 409 Pacific tip there. 409 Pacific for that one. How about that? How about that? All right. We roll on in March Madness. Trash with EG is on the other side. LT's on vacation all this week. Uh, Champy's Chicken bringing you this hour. Champy'sChicken.com, Highway 119 in Alabaster. Open for lunch right now. Swing by there and perfect for the weekend to watch all the big games. It's Champy's Chicken, Champy'sChicken.com. We are back in a moment right here on the next round. Follow Rockstar on Twitter at RockstarBHM. NASCAR is returning to the Talladega Super Speedway for the 2024 GEICO 500 weekend, Saturday, April 20th through Sunday, April 21. Guarantee your 2024 GEICO 500 weekend experience today by visiting talladegasuperspeedway.com or calling 877-GO-TO-DEGA. Enhance your race weekend by adding passes to the Talladega Garage Experience presented by Cool Ray. It is the GEICO 500 weekend, Saturday, April 20th and Sunday, April 21st. Guarantee your spot now, talladegasuperspeedway.com or 877-GO-TO-DEGA. This hour of the next round is presented by the Birmingham Racecourse Casino. Now featuring seven days of giveaways with your chance to win a share of up to $125,000. The more you visit the Birmingham Racecourse Casino, the more chances you have to win. Get ready to level up your fandom with the Autograph app. Co-founded by the legendary Tom Brady himself, this app is your one-stop shop for everything college sports. Access to all the best sports content, exciting fan challenges, and exclusive rewards. Think. Crazy discounts on tickets, limited edition merch, and much more. Just look at this. Autograph hooked up six lucky fans with tickets to the Arkansas-Alabama game for just $16 a ticket. That's what they call true fan pricing. Ready to join the party? Download the free Autograph app today and use the code TNR for exclusive access. You have all heard of Red Wing Shoes, but what is Red Wing Shoes? It's the place where men buy boots, plain and simple. Who are Red Wing's customers? They are construction workers, warehouse employees, college students, the guy that fixes your AC, the guy at the end of the bar, the IT guy. Red Wing is a father, Red Wing is a son, Red Wing is a cult following shared by all men. A classic comfortable pair of cool boots with a story to tell. What's your Red Wing story? Red Wing Shoe Stores, located in Pelham and Trussville. It's that time of year. Hoops, hops, and wings with our friends at Walk-Ons. We're talking about the unbelievable madness of the best viewing and the best food in town. This tournament season, try any of the three local walk-ons in Trussville, Stadium Trace in Hoover, and also the Greystone location. A wonderful menu with original food, great drinks, but most importantly in tournament season, TV's everywhere, so you can keep up with how your bracket's burning. Your home for all the tournament action is Walk-On Sports Bistro. Storm season is here. Make sure you have a plan of action in place right now. Greg from Pell City and Storm Restoration Roofing should be your first call when storms hit. Insurance companies love working with Storm Restoration Roofing because of Greg Nelson's name and reputation in the industry. When storms hit, call Greg Nelson. He's local. 205-542-3531. He's the home of the free no-cost roof inspection. Greg from Pell City on Facebook. 205 542 3531, it's Storm Restoration Roofing. Start your day online with our website, nextroundlive.com, for the latest videos, podcasts, and college football stories. It's also a great way to stream the show or shop in the Next Round store. Stay connected by visiting nextroundlive.com.
know that's gonna shock you. I ended up saying, ah, oh, let's not go to all the trouble. Let's just go with one. <laughs> so, yeah. I am the uh, uh, the path of least resistance most of the time, Rockstar. I know that shocks you. What are you this time? Uh, sometimes I'm I'm complicated. Sometimes I'm an obstacle. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes Occasionally. I'm an obstacle to easiness. Like asking uh, Brown what you're thinking. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Precision sports gets you back in the game. When's the last time you tweaked or heard something, Emily Grace? I mean, it's different for me. I'm old. <laughs> Well, you're um, young. When's the last time you tweaked her? Have you ever pulled a muscle? I don't. Probably lacrosse. Sprained, sprained a knee. Lacrosse. You played lacrosse? Lacrosse? Yeah. Well, how about the, our basketball game? Were you sore after that? I, I was. was. I was. I was for tight. like a week. Yeah. I was tight. Tight. Yeah, tight. lacrosse was my sport of choice. Is it really? Yeah. Did you ever get knocked around? Is there checking in female rec- there lacrosse? There is. And I, shockingly, uh, that was something I got called for quite a lot. Oh, so you were the aggressor. Well, I was, well, I've yes. seen you play basketball. Yeah. You were a yeah. straight-up goon in our basketball I game. I was a defensive specialist in yeah. basketball. Uh, my dad yeah. would put me in so I could foul out, and yeah. that translated over to yeah. lacrosse. If Tyler had any idea what the rules of basketball were <laughs> yeah. when he was officiating, uh, E.G. would have fouled yeah. out of our yeah. basketball I game. Uh, I, will, I will, at this point, I will just simply call you. Pringle from now on. Okay. You, you are Pringle from I, now on. I was, uh, can I tell you what my award was in lacrosse? Yeah. Pound for pound. Uh, pound for pound, the toughest player on toughest the field. Toughest pound for pound. I played uh, offense too, not even mm. defense. Precision sports medicine and orthopedics hit you back in the game. If you're like me and you occasionally fall apart when doing something athletically, whether it's pickleball or pickup basketball, they will get you back to work, which is always important, or back to play. Uh, elbows, uh, knees, back, hips, whatever it is. Precision Sports Medicine or Orthopedics gets you back to life and back on track. Orthopedic Care Better Together. Find your provider today. Call 205-512-3885, 512-3885, or precisionsportsortho.com slash 2024, precisionsportsortho.com slash 2024, yes. That's what Tyler says. We were asking for flagrants anytime somebody breathed on us. He said we were weak. Yeah. Uh, My favorite was, I can't even remember who was arguing, and Tyler said, hey, any more of that out of you, and I'll, t- I'll throw yeah. you out of here. Yeah. So uh, uh, so instead of bringing up the Precision Sports graphic, he was typing in the chat room. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so, sometimes he's hard to read. Sometimes yeah. he's hard to read. <laughs> uh, Lunsford, a quick update before we do trash on the – on the bracket challenge, I, I'm this close to just taking it off everybody's plate and just saying I lose. But you say there's still a mathematical chance uh, that's down. To, I, there won't, we won't be waiting long until this is done. This will be the earliest bracket challenge tap out possibly of all time. Um, I mean, possibly. Really, it comes down to the first games. If UConn and Arizona, which I believe those are the first two games Thursday. Um, that if, is true. If those two win, then it's over. Pr- pretty much over. The biggest thing is you have Houston and Tennessee moving on to the Final Four with Houston winning uh, that matchup. And Lance has Houston and Tennessee moving on as well, where Brown had, what, Kentucky Kentucky. and Creighton. That is right. With Creighton onto the championship. So if Tennessee beats Creighton and Houston wins, you have potential add 14 points that Brown doesn't. And then if Arizona loses to Clemson, Clemson. if Arizona loses to Clemson, then at that point Brown pretty much loses because – no matter what UConn does, it's not going to be enough to cancel out the uh, the other two. So, See? I'm just saying. See, it's not over. I mean, everybody's, over. everybody's already sending Dunaway to shoot three pointers. It's not over. Um, Jim even has the sign uh, signed to prove. Loser, it. let's go. Likely Aztecs. loser. Uh, you yeah, get so it in the light, Jim. Let's go. If San Diego State wins, also that will obviously kill UConn. So that uh, cancels out the Auburn loss for Jim. Yeah. So. so San Diego State uh, it helps Dunaway. Clemson helps Dunaway. I mean, you're not dead yet. You're not dead yet. Clemson. Now, I like my Clemson spot. Clemson ain't beating Arizona. Anything I don't think so either. Happen. Yeah, I don't think so either. Yeah. I like my spot. Other than that, let's hit the big button. Let's do mortgage right. They bring us, they bring us trash on the table. Around how many people would you say live on Earth? On Earth? Yeah. Eight million. Million or billion? Eight million. Yes. LT's yes. Trash is presented by Mortgage Right. Mortgages done the right way. Veteran owned and operated. Mortgage Right has great programs for those of you that have bravely served our country and great programs for anyone. If you're ready to refinance your house or put your house on the market or you're in the market for a house, your first call needs to be to Mortgage Right. MortgageRight.com slash TNR. MortgageRight.com slash TNR today. 
Our trash presenter in for Lance Taylor is Emily Grace McWhorter. Woohoo! These are some funny ones. I'm excited for this. Rock started well on these, huh? (laughs) Okay. Teacher alleges she was fired from Michigan school because of her rap career. Can you guys guess what her rap name was? Her rap career. Throw something out there. Um, You won't get it. You, I will not get it. I was gonna go teacher related. Uh, I was gonna go DJ textbook. Okay. Uh, I was gonna go. Um. Uh, little home, little homework. <laughs> little, little, little homework. homework. I'll go former, former teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Brown, who goes by the name of Drippin' Honey, says Drippin' the, Honey <laughs> says the parent anonymously complained about her content, leading to a meeting between Brown, the school dean, and principal. Brown says she was told the parent felt she was a bad influence on her students because she raps. DJ Truancy. That would she, be good. Allegedly asked the school to tell her in writing what issues the school had with her content, but that did not happen. During a meeting in November, Brown claimed she was given an ultimatum to remove the content, but she refused. A month later, she was voted Teacher of the Month by students. Oh, wow. wow. Teacher of the Month. Yeah. But by then, Brown knew it was only a matter of time before she lost her job. I mean, I'm conflicted by this. We're just knowing that uh, if, I don't it doesn't say what age she teaches uh, preparatory school. Preparatory high school, so she's in high school. Somebody's gonna say, like, you know, that's dripping honey, and like they're gonna be. Yeah, and kids. I do wonder if she Ms. was dripping voted... honey. I'm sorry, Miss Brown. Yeah. I wondered if she was voted teacher of the month because she was dripping honey. That's I right. feel she's like probably that, a cool teacher. Yeah, that could have been mm. an influence on what was going on if she shared with her students, like, "Hey, I'm about to lose my job yeah. because of dripping honey." So little recess. It's good. The reps like are this. like uh, the answer to the test are A, C. <laughs> B, B, B. <laughs> A. C. Sorry. Okay. Woman accused of lighting fire on porch after no answer at, and this is in quote, at friend's house. I mean, this you knock on the door so many times, you want to Oh, my oh, goodness. Oh, wow. Oh, Rockstar. My Pippi goodness. Longstocking left her stuff go. Rockstar, is this file footage or is yeah. this the actual I mean, mug? <laughs> that's the mug shot. That is the mug shot? Yeah. She went out of the house with her hair like that? Yes. Oh, she burned down a house. Her she hair like burned that. down a house. A Burlington woman was arrested Tuesday after police say she lit items on fire on a stranger's porch. Imagine coming home to that. Yeah. Well, that or the fire. Yeah. Which both. one? Which one? Both? Yeah. yeah. I'd rather have the fire. So, what are you wearing today? Quilt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are you going to fix your hair? Rock Grandmother's <laughs> curtains. But there's a carabiner in her hair. Yeah. That's what I thought there, E.G. Is that what that is? Yes. Yeah. Purple. I guess it kind of matches the quilt. My so goodness. she faces charges of reckless use of fire, explosives, slash destructive devices, <laughs> a serious misdemeanor, and possession of drug paraphernalia, a simple misdemeanor. Uh, so At least she doesn't look crazy. No, not at all. So the officers found the woman identified as young. That's it. She admitted to starting the fire so. when officers asked her what she was doing. She told the officers she believed the home belonged to a friend. She said she also saw a sign that said, which is welcome. Mm. And right, so I just went right to the door. Well, naturally, yeah. because she was a witch, she uh, lit some items on fire. She's the happiest witch I've seen, though. You don't she really see witches jolly. smile that much, do you, Rockstar? No, but it's very haunting that that's. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. I mean, that's a witch. Just, huh? no, uh, take out the teeth. Just go nose and eyes. Yeah. That would scare the crap out of me. Oh, just yeah, those eyes. eyes. I'm trying yeah. to. Just those eyes yeah. would scare yeah. the crap out of me. It's a little. little uh, not Chucky, but there's... Is, there's, that, is yeah. it that clown movie? Those eyes I don't know are, how you can say it, but she's an ugly carrot top. I don't know how you can say that. <laughs> yeah. That, because that insinuates the carrot top's yeah, good looking. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think saying. now with the, the right products and like a little brushing of the hair, I think she could be a nice looking woman. Uh, yeah, I'm with EG. There's potential there's there. Potential. She's going to need beautiful. to quit being a witch yeah. and burning people's houses down. Well, can I tell you guys what and she lit on maybe fire? Maybe buy a bottle of pert. Yes. Uh, let me guess. She lit a... Do they still make pert? That was a random, it's, that was it's, a random it's, shampoo for me to choose. It's plus, by the way. Per she, plus. Yeah. Not just normal she light a couch? No. Uh, it was a... She collected these items. Car's tail light, tin foil, bark, and a yellow lawn flag. Uh, tin foil is rough to burn. It's hard to light. Yeah. Yeah. And then she just threw her cigarette into the mix when her friend did not answer the door. Rocky, that surprises me that she's a smoker. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm with you. Do you think our, uh, you think our guys got this witch's address? We got, we got, I'm going to dress for you. They're right here. Four of you. Witches. You so much as sneeze in the wrong direction. <laughs> Isn't that what he said? Let I us call, pray. Is it call for sneeze, he says. I can't. I can't remember. You can't so much remember. sneeze in the wrong direction. I'll turn you in. Okay. Up next, we've got map shows the literal translations of U.S. place names. 
Okay. We're going to start with Alabama. What do you guys think the literal translation of Alabama is? Oh, don't look at the map. Don't look at the map. Uh, uh, look. Oh. Okay. He, was, he was studying. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all put something in the teleprompter and you I expect an old news yeah. guy not to look at it? All right. Yeah. Sue me. Yeah. Weed gatherer? Weed gatherer. Now, th- wait, can you explain this to me? So this is... So I'm well, sure Al- it's a, a Native American tongue. Okay, yeah. okay, I agree. Majority. A lot of these are Native American right. based off something I'm Yeah, it turns out they had a lot of land here at one yes. point. Yeah. The Bureau of Indian Affairs put on this map. Oh, did they now? Yes. This is, this is their... <laughs> these guys are fierce. <laughs> this is their passive-aggressive way of saying, we used to own all this land until yeah. you guys got here. And, until the weed yeah. gatherers came. The weed gatherers. Uh, mm. Arkansas South Wind people. Yeah. Rock, rock star is part of that tribe. Yeah. Amen, sister. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, ever set behind you. Yeah. yeah. Colorado, colored red. Yeah. yeah. Seems like they should be the weed gatherers. <laughs> yeah, I know. They <laughs> got that one wrong. Uh, Oklahoma, red people. Uh, seems like we should change their mascot's name. Yep. <laughs> Michigan, great water. Well, they do have a lot of water they up do. there. There's they no do. doubt about that. Yeah. Kentucky, land of tomorrow. So don't really get that one. I'll I go li- tomorrow. I, I live there. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's more yesterday than it is tomorrow. Indiana, land of the Indians. Right. Yeah, yeah. Kind of self-explanatory yeah. right there. Yeah. 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 Well, we'd like this back. <laughs> We're going to call this the land of the Indians. <laughs> <laughs> Iowa, that's where our witchy friend is from. Uh-huh. They are the sleepy ones. Uh-huh. Yeah, I've watched their football. Mm. And that's all that's on the list. But my favorite, after looking at this map, I think it's the land of King George. Which one is that? Georgia. Georgia. Georgia? Oh, land yeah. of King George. I mean, your boy did own it at one he point. Did. Yeah. The second. Yeah. yeah. Texas. The friend. F- friend. That's a good one. Yeah. Just friend. Place of the small spring. Mythical island, Califia, California. Yeah. That's interesting. Gym of the mountains. Oh, that's you. Ah, gym of the gym mountains. Gym of the mountains. <laughs> Gym of the mountains. Okay, wrapping yeah. up. This is a living nightmare for me. Oh, where do you see it? I don't oh, want to see photos? it. I yeah. don't want to see it. All right. Ugh, you, you guys know my aversion to things that crawl. The world's largest leech. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Gro- oh. oh, my gosh, Rockstar. That thing's oh, no. huge. So no. nasty. <laughs> I think it's an entire forearm for that Ooh. one girl. Oh. And a le- and the oh, I never knew what a leech looked like. That's what a leech looked like? Yeah. yeah. What do you think it looked like? <laughs> I don't know, but I've seen those before. Michael Leach? That's yeah. so, <laughs> <laughs> so, well, That's so nasty. Covered. So this is in the Amazon. I feel like that makes sense. Yeah, everything's in the Amazon. Yeah, I think they got a lot of stuff there. So this grew up to be 18 inches long. Mm, mm, mm. So oh, it looks nasty. longer than that, but that, I mean, that is a hefty, uh, yeah, that's a, a hefty leech. Do uh, they get bigger as they suck the blood rock star? Is it like a, they get fatter like tick? Yeah. That's what they, yeah, that's what they yeah. eat. Yeah. Let me give you guys the rundown on this guy. So if you're trying to avoid them, they're found in wet and humid areas all over the globe. And while most are smaller than the average person's index finger, that is still too big for me. Yeah. So, I mean, they're basically finger sized and this one is forearm sized. Yeah, that's, that's the ones I've seen before. I yeah. never knew what they were around a creek. Oh, remember yeah. in the hospitals, bloodletting, they would put those oh, yeah. on you. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, was, that yeah. was yeah. a treatment. They yeah. were medicinal at one yeah. point. Yeah. That, was, that was in the land of tomorrow. Yeah. They thought that was the future <laughs> of medicine. <laughs> yes. Uh, now, this would be medicinal for like Andre the Giant. This yeah. is the type of leech you need for him. Yeah. I would pray that the Lord would just take me if they yeah, leeches me too. On me. When you uh, when you think leeches, what movie pops to mind? Uh, Stand by me. Stand by Stand me. By me. What's yeah. the, there was that a children's book that had leeches in it, and it, they freaked me out. Really? Uh, what's that series? A series of unfortunate events. Oh. Yeah, I think leeches were in that. Really? Lemony Snicket? Yes. Is that what it is? Huh? Yeah. yeah. Lemony. Wait, what is it? Lemony, Lemony Snicket? Snicket? Yeah. yeah. It's so, actually a good uh, TV series. Yeah, that was during like COVID. Uh, I think. Doogie Howser. What's his name? You know Patrick Harris yeah, plays yeah, him. Yeah, Jim yeah. Carrey played him in the film. Yeah, we watched that. We watched that. Oh my gosh, y'all know this is a species. This isn't a one-off. Oh, so oh there's m- there's more than one of this. The Amazonian giant leech. I'm t- Dunaway's right though. Once you get in the Amazon, all bets are off. Oh. Like I mean, everything gets bigger and, and creepier Honda. and crazier in there. Yeah. Gross. yeah, I hate. Yeah, you just those. don't go to the Amazon. That's the yeah. solution there, EG. Well, they deliver. That is trash today. Wow. <laughs> Is that trash? That is trash. Get Brought out. to you by our friends at Mortgage Right. How do I do on timing? Sorry. Uh, oh, it's fantastic. Uh, on oh, we got plenty of time. You got so any much more so you may get a follow-up did question. You, wow. We might, we may invite you over to the couch to talk oh. a little did more. You, uh, did you cut a story? Do you want to no, go back? No, no. Okay. Uh-uh. I just... Uh, Tell us about Mortgage Right. MortgageRight.com slash TNR. Veteran owned, veteran operated. If you're looking for a home, your first stop needs to be Mortgage Right. MortgageRight.com slash TNR.
N R. All right. Uh, since we got a little extra time. Okay. Um, Shohei Atani talks later today. Yes, he does. Yeah. Do you through a translator a, though? Apparently, right? with a new we interpreter. Got a interpreter. Uh, I mean, right now, if I'm Atani, I speak absolutely zero English. Like, I don't understand a word you're no, saying. I'm I, so sorry. Now, yes. Can I put a little spin on this? Well, you're a Braves I'm, fan, so I'm I sure this is not going to be unbiased. No, no, no. Sure. I saw a now take this where you will. I saw a tweet that was unearthed from a quote of Mike Trout saying he was asked, what is one thing that Shohei has not mastered yet? Yeah. Gambling. Yes. And he said, I would say English, but he's already mastered it. And that was in 2021. Yeah. Right yeah. now, I understand none of your English questions. I am so yeah. sorry. I cannot answer these. I don't yeah. understand a word you're saying. I We're going to give you another check. Oh, I understand that. That, that, again, that was not in form of a question. Yeah. I understand that. So and I'm, and I'm going to plead the fifth. I don't know what that means. <laughs> yeah, but it seems to work. <laughs> but I'm going to plead the fifth a lot. Well, and, and, and what has what will happen now is people have started digging back. I saw a thread this weekend of games, you know, and that's not to say he threw them, but people are like, Wow, I mean, these numbers are out of whack for what he normally does, and there were these big bets made and all that. People are going to start digging now. It'll be interesting to see what they dig up on him. More Alabama Sweet 16 in the final segment. Two more things while EG is with us here. Uh, one of them involves the NFL. They've already uh, passed today. The, vote, the owners have voted on the hip drop tackle being banned from the game. Uh Tyler's about to give us a, a, a graphic. They're going to vote at some point, maybe as early today, for the new hybrid kickoff in the NFL. Compl complicated as it is, they used it in the XFL last year. You'll have the kickoff start line and the start zone on the other side of the 50 of the receiving team. You see the ball to the far left of the screen. That's where you're going to kick from. If it lands in the landing zone, that's a returnable kick. But nobody can move in those other two lines, the blue or the yellow lines, until the ball is touched. If it goes into the end zone, uh, they've changed it now. Instead of spotting it at the 35, they're going to spot it at the 30. So we're doing all of this, basically, to kick it out of the end zone. Instead of placing it at the 25, they're going to place it at the 30. Wow. But what they're trying to do is, okay, now, what, what, is, what is this? This is how they this will is line the alignment? up. Okay. Yeah, this is the lineup. So what Ten players, and then that, you've got to have two people back. So it's 10 Nine blocking 10, and then one kicker way back there and two receivers. So what they're eliminating is a kick short of the 20 where a guy gets blown up when he catches it because you're already downfield, and they're encouraging the touchback. Yeah. Now, this is not going to be – it is the old XFL style sort of Markwell. Big Carolina fan, I think. He's excited about playing Alabama. Um, it's the hybrid kickoff. It's coming to the NFL, and it's basically the all those other players that's not returning the kick or kicking the ball, all the blocking you, and the full, they're trying to get rid of that. You know what this eliminates, though, is a surprise onside kick. No, oh, absolutely. Because all your, all your, for those that can't see this, yep. all of your kick Wait. coverage guys are at the other 40. They're, uh, uh, yeah. they're already across midfield. Yeah, in fact, it, it eliminates the onside kick, Brandy. I don't see well, how they can I pass think, this without doing – without passing the other rule where it's going to be fourth and 20 for onside kick. Because if I'm the well, kicker, I only have to kick it 10 yards. No. And those guys can never get there. You in would time. have to do a carve out in the rules for an onside kick. Oh. And then it has to be an onside kick. I would imagine, Jim, is the only way you could do that. But you can do the surprise one like Sean Payton used in the uh, in the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, there's no way you could even execute it now. Yeah. I don't like injuries, but I don't like that. <laughs> Uh, final <laughs> final thing. <laughs> Don't away all the record rock star does not like injuries. He is uh, but I don't like that. I'll get that cleared up. Final thing, uh, taking all the CBS brackets, all the Yahoo brackets, all the ESPN.com brackets, how many perfect brackets are are left? Not now, because now the answer is zero. It was eight, right? How many were left after Friday night, the first two days? Thursday and Friday, how many were left? What percentage? I think it was eight. Yeah. Was it eight? No, it's eight. more than eight. 8% is what you're no, saying? No, I thought it was only No, eight. I think it's 1.2%. After day two of the tournament, when day two, when Friday was done. That's just round done. one. That's Wait, only round Friday, one. Friday, Saturday? Or? No, no, Thursday, Friday. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Thursday, round Friday, one. round one. 32 games. There were zero perfect brackets left. Wow. So everybody in all the major sites have been wiped yeah, out. If you think that million dollar thing, it was down to 0 0.0038, Caleb, I think after day one. Um, wow. Or definitely after when Auburn lost. But zero perfect brackets after day two of all of those combined together. Do you so, guys think? Sorry, don't. No, 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 no. I'm Ryan, by the way. 
think we're about to call me down the way. Uh, mm. uh, Son of a has 53 points. I don't know what his, well, I do know what his record is. Um, he got 25 in the round. Of, he got. That's 25 out of uh, 32. Well, that's 25 points. 25 yeah. out of, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then he got 28 points in the round of 32, which all those games were worth two, two points apiece. Yeah, yeah. So he got 14 he's, of 16 right there. He's done pretty well. Yeah, that's he's, pretty darn good. Yeah, but that's far from undefeated. Yeah, pretty darn good. All right, final segment coming up. Uh, it'll be on March Madness. It'll be on the Sweet 16 team from our state. It'll be on Alabama. And that's when we come back right here on the show that's brought to you by the Talladega Super Speedway. NASCAR returning over to the high banks of Talladega, the world's fastest speedway. Um, and they've got an unbelievable experience going on over there. And it's coming up April 20th and 21st. First, you got Walker Hayes in concert. Your Geico 500 ticket on Sunday gets you into the Walker Hayes nice. ticket on Saturday night. Do you know a Walker Hayes song? I do, but I can't name one. But um, I am familiar with him. Isn't it fancy like he sings yeah. that the Applebee's song? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, try to try to sell that fact yeah, that he's in concert. I love Vega. Walker Hayes. He does yes. the one that's got Nick Saban in it too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he does. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's uh, Infinity Race, Arca Race on Saturday. On Sunday is the Cup Race, and you can get your tickets TalladegaSuperSpeedway.com, TalladegaSuperSpeedway.com, eight seven seven go to Dega, and don't forget to enhance your race experience by adding on like the Talladega Garage Experience, where you can watch every one of your favorite drivers work on their cars, even talk to the crew, talk to the drivers when they're in there. Uh, the only thing that's separating you about a waist high fence, you can see it all happening right there in the big. Uh, Talladega Garage Experience presented by Cool Ray. All that and so much more going on at Talladega Super Speedway April 20th and 21st. We'll be out there too. TalladegaSuperSpeedway.com or 877-GO-TO-DEGA. Follow Scott Forrester on Twitter at Scott Forrester TV. Things fall apart. There's even a book about it. But that doesn't mean you have to break the bank to fix them. Ryan Brown here for the next round. Our friends at Mortgage Ride have a new renovation option that will make repairs and other home improvements easy. If you've recently purchased a home and find yourself short on cash or you're looking to buy a fixer-upper, Mortgage Ride's renovation loan program can help you spruce up your space. Repairs can be made to your roof, plumbing, flooring, and more with the help of top-notch mortgage professionals. So get your fix by visiting MortgageRide.com TNR and MLS 2239 Equal Housing Lender. Fire damage to your home or business is something you never want to consider. Ryan Brown here from the next round. But in the horrible event it happens, Dry Tech is here to help. They respond quickly and will reply to you within 20 minutes when you call 205-637-0143. They're working for you, the customer, not the insurance company. They've got five crews ready to go 24-7. Don't call the insurance company first. Call Dry Tech. Just remember this website, mydrytech.com. That is mydrytech.com. Hey, Lance Taylor from the next round to tell you about one of our favorite places for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That is Hamburger Heaven since 1982. Hamburger Heaven has been serving Birmingham's best hamburgers, cheeseburgers, french fries, hand-spun milkshakes, and sandwiches made fresh to order. All of their ingredients are fresh and prepared daily. This includes their beef, always fresh, never frozen, hand patted each and every day. For breakfast, lunch, or dinner, visit any of the four locations, Highway 280, Irondale, Gardendale, and Homewood. This hour of the next round is presented by the Birmingham Racecourse Casino. Now featuring seven days of giveaways with your chance to win a share of up to $125,000. The more you visit the Birmingham Racecourse Casino, the more chances you have to win. Take TNR on the go with a podcast built for your satisfaction. Miss Hour 1, find it in podcast form. Miss Hour 2, stream it now. Miss Hour 3, download it for later. Miss Hour 4, well, just know it's never coming back. Listen to TNR wherever you find podcasts. Hey, let me tell you about our friends at Urology Centers of Alabama. Compassionate and comprehensive urological care with 35 physicians, 17 locations across Alabama. Their patient-centered approach to all of your urological needs. Remember, they've got that new men's health center. It is beautiful, helping men with a wide range of sensitive male issues in a comfortable environment. You can always go online, visit urologycentersalabama.com, schedule an appointment with one of their many urologists today. Is Coke Zero Sugar the best Coke ever? Man, that's a bold question. But it's got that irresistible taste to back it up. One thing's for sure, when you've got an irresistible tasty match like Zero Sugar and Zero Calories, something sensational is bound to happen. It's too bad you can't taste it with your ears because this Coke Zero Sugar tastes amazing. 
Truthfully, it's hard to put into uh, words, and that's my job. Sugar. You'll have to take a taste for yourself. Coke Zero Sugar, best Coke ever. <laughs> Okay, Rockstar, uh, we'll wrap up a little Alabama here. Give me uh, first cut number eight, and then we'll cut number 14 at the end. Um, just in the locker room last night when Taylor Korn went in there, and uh, she she walked in there and had a chance. Uh, one of the first pe- people she sat down to talk to was Nick Pringle. It's like she's been on this trip with Nick Pringle. Like She flew up there with him. Yep. Uh, she said she's run into him in the hotel countless times, and it was like every time she went in the locker room, he was the first guy to talk to her, and he's been very engaging in yeah. these interviews. People, I mean, we can we can share now. We we put Taylor up at the at the team hotel, Alabama and Auburn, uh, shared uh, shared a hotel, and uh, there was an opening uh, there, and that's where that's where she was saying. So she had uh, in up close and personal look at how it all went down with Auburn and Alabama out there in Spokane. So she's in the locker room last night. Uh, right after Alabama punched their ticket to the Sweet 16. And Rockstar, this is what Nick Pringle gave the reaction instantly. It's really incredible. <laughs> it's really incredible for real. Though. I mean, I, I, I'm just happy to, you know, be a part of this. I mean, like two years straight to the Sweet 16, you know, being from a small town in, in, in the low country of South Carolina. I mean, guys like that, they don't, I mean, I'm glad like I get to be here and, and be a role model for guys back at home. I mean, just to, just to give them, you know, a motivation to, to, to show them that it is possible. I mean, anything is possible. And I mean, we're going to make something happen and, and, and show the world that we're one of the best teams in the country. The Nick Pringle experience is something else. I mean, that's he's just an engaging guy like that. You watch those interviews and you're like, how has he been in Nate Oates' doghouse so many times this year? How is he a guy that is breaking a clipboard, getting his team a technical in a key situation? I mean, and then he's that guy and – he, he's an interesting cat, man. I don't, I don't know that you could find Nick Pringle. Hey, but but so important. I think you have to have him to beat North Carolina. He's got to have another good I game. Don't, I don't I, disagree. I thought he had a good game last night. I really did. To forget the stat sheets, he was a force when he was out there. Uh, and then then there was Mo Diabate, and I don't think we've said enough about him and what he did. And we talked about him a lot, especially in the first segment. But part of that ten zero run to end the game. Mo Diabate off the bench, and he doesn't play a lot, but when he was called on last night, he was huge. When the game was slipping away from Alabama, Mo Diabate was huge, and his teammates, uh, both Aaron Estrada first and then Rylan Griffin, will not um, will not let you forget what Mo did last night. Yeah, I think he scored like, what, eight points in a row? You know, he made his free throws today, so I'm super happy for Mo because like, like everybody don't know, like he puts in a lot of work, extra time in the gym, and this is the perfect time for it to show. So, yeah, I'm happy for him. Oh, he was huge. We don't win that game without him. I think we were down three, and he came in, got a couple offensive rebounds, got an M1, got a free throw. I mean, they made another layup, made two free throws. He was doing three from the free throw line. We just don't win this game. We, it's simply put, we just don't win it without him. Win this game without him, and we wouldn't be playing on Thursday without Mo Diabate. So, um, just a big part of, for the team. And, you know, he didn't play that much until the very end. Just that's, That just shows you what type of person he is. He's a, he's a guy you can uh, – he wants the team to win, so he's going to do whatever he can for the team to win. So uh, he was huge for us. Uh, Rylan Griffin with the hot takes last night, by yeah, the way. He yeah, said he Nate one. Oates is a GOAT. Yep. I know people are going to think it's a hot take, but yep. I think he's going to go. He's going to win the national championship. And then he's right there. It's like, yep. we do not win this game without Mo Diabate. And, well, and he's, I, we'll see if he's right about Nate Oates being the GOAT. He might be a little bit premature on that one, but he's absolutely right about not winning that game without Mo Diabate. One other thing is, is that now their primary uniform? They've pretty much just gone strictly to that uniform now. Not anymore, Brown. They got to go crimson the rest of the way. Oh, so they were able to wear that because they were the higher seed in both those games. I don't think they have a crimson version of that. Well, you could do that overnight. Now you got to ship it out west because they're not coming back to Tuscaloosa. Yeah, they're on their way to L.A. today. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's only a white version. I've not seen a crimson version of that, uh, though I wouldn't be against it. Um, the, The lettering... Uh, and the pants don't seem to match with me, but I love the the retro A and the new look future. But I saw Texas in a jersey the other day that had sort of that lettering. Right. So I've um, kind of liked the uniform, but I just I, I knew it was 
It was kind of like a throwback, though. They pointed out it's not really a throwback because yeah. we've never worn it before, but it just looks like a throwback. Yeah, they need to use and, that lettering and yeah. that A. Three and one in that uniform. Yeah. We've got a little bit of breaking news here at the end of the show that is going to affect the SEC and local basketball to Birmingham. As everyone knows, the Vanderbilt job is open. And Bucky McMillan's name have been closely tied to that show. They are, according to Jeff Borzello of ESPN, hiring James Madison coach Mark Byington. Uh, Pete Thamel and Jeff Borzello reporting that. That's the guy that just coached James Madison into the second round. He got drilled by Duke. So he is going to take the Vanderbilt job. That is great news for Samford. It is. I think another job to watch for Bucky is Oklahoma State. As long as that job's open, I think if you could survive those two, though, you might be okay. Now, Louisville's still got to hire a coach, and you could have the trickle-down effect there that opens other jobs if they hire a guy away from another job. But that, that's, that was one. If you want to keep Bucky McMillan, that's the one you wanted to pass. So Vanderbilt is uh, apparently off the board now. Hey, real quickly, would you leave Marquette if you're Shaka Smart for Louisville? I don't know. That's a tough one. I, Remember, I he had the Texas yeah. job, and it didn't go well. Louisville would be sort of like the Texas yeah, I job. Feel, I feel like I fell my stride at Marquette. I think I'd just stay there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a tough one. Uh, Shocker is getting a lot of uh, a lot of play these days going into the Sweet 16. So's Bama. They're still alive. We'll talk more about it tomorrow, 9 a.m. Central Time. Until next time, God bless you, and God bless America.